And we are live. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. <laughs> Hello to these wonderful people on my screen and all these wonderful people in our chat. Thank you so much for coming in this week. Um, we hope you guys have appreciated some of the awesome stuff that we've been doing this week. Kevin killing it on the Instagram game lately. Some freaking cool stuff coming through and some very exciting things in the works, we do have to admit. Um, lots but, of memes. Oh, yeah. Lots of memes. All the memes. Um, so we did uh, skip last week uh, doing a giveaway. We ended up having a really jam-packed session and wanted to get a bunch of stuff in, so we didn't have enough time to run one. Uh, this week, though, we are back on form. Uh, I've got one of our awesome um, little dice trays all printed up and ready to go, so we're going to be go ahead and giving away one of those at our break, so make sure you stick around for that. Uh, usually happens about two or so hours into the stream, maybe a little bit under that. Um, so listen to us for a while, enjoy the campaign, and hey, you might win something free. It's pretty cool. So here we are, all haircutted and back to some semblance of normalcy. <laughs> but, uh, that's just though. me. That's just me. Um, but yeah, do we have any announcements? Anything happen? Anybody wants to chat about? Mm. Not right now. I want to get going and get into a seedy underbelly part of the city. <laughs> I'm excited to go to a library. 
Yeah, everybody yeah. loves the library. I'm so happy. <laughs> All right, awesome. We'll go ahead and roll our intro video. We'll see you guys back here in one minute. <laughs> And we're back. Ooh. So, last we left off, the party having made their way with the assistance of a vision from Leaf to the village of Sacomber, a relatively small one, about 14, 13 days travel outside of the much larger city of Waterdeep. There, they embarked on a rather haphazard tracking mission, trying to figure out exactly what some uh, devils were that had apparently attacked the village of Sacomber more recently. They succeeded in their mission, ended up finding one of these entities alive and well in a wooded grove, fighting the entity and escaping, managing to uh, scare it off. But returning to the city, returning eventually back to Waterdeep, they checked in with everybody who they needed to let know what the situations were, uh, only to find out that in their absence, the creature that had assaulted them had in turn assaulted the city, laying waste to all, seemingly, of the Lord's Alliance guards there, uh, as well as gravely injuring, though not killing, the rather odd Sage of Sacomber, a human named Amelior Amanitas. With Amelior's assistance, they figured out what exactly had happened and found out that the entity that had been summoned and that had laid waste was, in ser was searching his home, his tower, for a book of some kind, a journal of one of the events that he had taken, uh, an expedition that he had undertaken going into the high forest just north of the city of Sacomber. So armed with that, the party made their way into the library below the city of Waterdeep, the Great Library inside the Temple of Ogma, and began researching a series of topics, trying to figure out exactly what was going on, as much information as they could possibly find on a variety of topics. Eventually turning in for the evening, after having had some discussions around potentially new armor, potentially new bows, and less picking up a very exciting new javelin, uh, the party returned to their home for the evening, and trying to figure out exactly what we're going to be their next steps. So, that is where we pick up today. So, with you guys waking up the following morning, breakfast being served, coffee and tea available to you, what is it you would like to do in the city of Waterdeep? Well, I've got what I came for. <laughs> We, does anybody have any more information we want to research at the library, or shall we just go straight for looking in other places for travel abilities? Well, yesterday one of the things we were thinking if we got back to the library was that we needed to research um, the Hoi Mountain and or the High Forest. That seems like uh, where all this activity is sort of coming from and going back to Nair Sucumber. So we were discussing, checking to see if there was any history of any kind of um, arcane activity there at all. And I think that, Lee, if you wanted to look up the verbal Code of Conduct. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, if, if we have time, but that might be something that I, uh, maybe I learned that from someone, I don't know. Well, uh, but you know, if we got time and we're going there, I might as well. Oh, sorry, I remember, just in case anyone else needs a small recap, we just got, decided about to learn about the High Forest because um, when we touched base with Amelior, when Leaf managed to contact him, it's because they broke into his tower and took a journal 
from him about his trip into the Hoi Forest from when he right. was younger. So, so there must be a research. Yeah. There's something weird in there. Um, <laughs> Do you think it's beneficial for us to do some research on Amelie or himself in the, in the library? Well, I'd say so, for sure. So if there's any mention of him going in there, yeah. Okay. So remind me, we're we're heading down to find a portal or a, a quick travel, essentially, yes? Yeah, I mean, I, I think... the library, from my I'm, understanding. My thought, at least, is, you know, maybe we do some research and we kind of find a, you know, jumping off point for where... Because, I mean, the high force is gigantic. Mm. Um, if we can even narrow, you know, a section of that that we can do our search in, that'll, you know, save us a lot of time and potentially save a lot of lives. So, of course, if we can do anything in that regard, that would help. Well, we have a couple well, things that would mind checking out the library as well. I don't need anything in particular at the library, so if you want, I can run around and do some prep, get us ready for our, our big trip. I would be glad to help you with that, Doctor. Oh, I'm, I'm pretty good on the whole other thing as well. Thank you, my what? Friend. All right. Really? There's nothing I'm, I can do to help you in this you know instance. What? There's, why don't you stand guard here at the inn in case the demons come for it? I mean, you know what, Les? I'm sure the more people uh, that are researching, you know, and helping, that'll probably speed things up so we can get going down there faster. So that's my thought, at least. Uh, mm hmm. All right, all right. You seem right. pretty keen about reading books before. I'm not sure. I did. I kind of found what I needed, but do you need some assistance finding your things? I guess extra hands wouldn't be much of a hindrance. Well, you're, you're so smart, Les, and I'm sure it would be of such help to everyone else at the library. I guess so. Um, these, these people really do need my assistance sometimes, or they'd be lost to them. It's so true. So true. Well, uh, this has been some great uh, bacon and eggs. Is anyone <laughs> ready to roll? Or mm -hmm. I've done my morning routine, so I'm not sure if anyone else has any skincare rituals or anything they like to do before we go adventuring. I'm feeling pretty good. I had my wheatgrass shot. Nice. <laughs> I have this tiny voile of the blood of my enemies that I, you know, moisturize with every morning. It works like a charm. That's me. That's really Oh my god, that's amazing. I had no idea you were doing that. I was wondering, but I, knew it. I was always too nervous to ask. You full drow glow. Incredible. Glow? The stock was, was here, now it's up here. It just went up a few notches. It's like bioluminescence at that point. Yeah, there you go. That youthful drow absence of light. There you go. <laughs> Alrighty. So, deciding to head back down to the library? Mm -hmm. right. mm. Perfect. Um, so I'm, I'm going to split off and do our arrangements to get uh, at the yawning portal. But yeah, absolutely. You guys do you. Awesome. Um, so the arrangements at the yawning portal are relatively straightforward. Um, you end up wandering in. Uh, it's a fairly bustling place, even first thing in the morning. Lots of drinks being splayed around. Quite a few cool. uh, flagons of ale. A lot of different uh, plates of meat and different plates of an absence of vegetable, seemingly, but uh, at least relatively decent. Um, and you end up just uh, seeing that there is a small back room uh, and a guard placed out front, kind of seated on a stool, just kind of surveying the room, a small sword at his waist, and he's just kind of looking around a little bit, uh, ensuring that nobody gets a bit too close. Um, but if anybody does get a bit too close, he just kind of stands up and kind of puts on a brave face and just kind of holds his hand out. And you see a couple of people just pay a couple of coins to him and are able to go into the back room. You would imagine that's probably a pretty safe bet as to where the uh, way to traverse to Undermountain would be. Cool. Uh, could I approach the bartender? Please? Absolutely. So just a small dwarven man on a stool that he keeps shifting around to go to the different parts of the bar and he just comes up. Does anyone look like they recognize me here? Uh, in here? Not particularly. Okay, cool. Yeah. And he just kind of uh, shuffles the stool over and hops up on top. Hey, what can I get you? Uh, what's your best? Uh, Dragon's Mead's pretty good today. Good batch. All right. I'll take a, I'll take a, take a pint of that. Too and uh, my, uh, my associates and I are looking at heading down into the Undermountain later on. You wouldn't happen to have a map or something we could use, would you? <laughs> I'll pay you handsomely. A map of Undermountain. 
that's not something that exists, Fend. When you All get right. down there, I'm sure the locals will treat you right, tell you exactly where you need to go, though. <laughs> I bet they will. You, uh, you hear any interesting gossip coming up from down there? Gossip coming up from Undermountain? Mm. Yeah, nothing outside Winter, the usual killings. Adventures or crazy things going on. Adventure is not exactly that common in the Undermountain. One of the things about the people down there, they're there for a reason. Right, crown threw them down a lot of the time. Or they chose to exile themselves to a place with eh, a little less law than the top world. Mm. People who tend to go down usually come back pretty quick, unless they're of the ilk that prefer to stay down there, in which case I haven't seen them for quite some time. Of course, of course. Uh, there wouldn't happen to be any uh, any people we could hire for guides kicking around around here, were there? Mm-hmm. And he kind of looks over and lifts himself up on the bar a little, kind of looks at a couple of the tables. Yeah. Jared over there. He might be an interesting one. He's been down and up a couple of times. Would at Jared, least know. Huh? Yeah. He would at least know a couple of the different uh, temples that you could see down there. Hall of Bones, things like that. All right. All right. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Happy to help. Two silver for the uh, mead, yeah? Uh, as you will. And I'll tip him an extra silver. Cheers. And he just turns around and hops off the stool and kind of shuffles it down the bar and starts pouring a couple other drinks. And you notice that the point person that he pointed out to uh, seems to be a male um, a male half-elf uh, named Jared. And he's just kind of in darker leathers, uh, looks like a series of daggers at his waist, and he's just got a cloak that's pulled back over his head. And he's kind of got a long, single braid ponytail going down the center uh, of his head, but it's all shaved on the sides. Okay, okay. Uh, is he sitting with anyone? Nope, just sitting by himself, uh, having a relatively nice plate of food and then two different glasses of uh, different types of liquid beside him. Looks like one is water and one is ale of some kind. Okay. I, I won't approach yet, but I'll I'll keep an eye on him and I might approach in an hour or so if he sticks around. Alright, sounds good. So from you, we'll go ahead and jump to those of you wanting to do your research. So heading into the Temple of Ogma, uh, you again present your sigils to Savant Savenius, uh, the elderly caretaker of the library, and he leads you down the staircase and eventually into the large room, a uh, similar one that you were in last time, not the exact one. It looks like it's probably in use by another scholar of some kind. Uh, but again, you were given free reign over the library if there's anything specific you'd like to research. Um, oh, who wants to start? Who wants to start? Uh, what was his name again? The uh, the elderly the... scholar is Savant Savenius. Savant Savenius. Okay. Uh, Savant, uh, we'd love if he could pull some some books for us. Um, we'd love to to learn about uh, the Firbolg Code. Uh, um, all right. The, his- the history. Any any history of um, the Shair. Firbolgs in Zacomber or Waterdeep. The Sha- Shair. One second. I feel like there should be something I know and I'm completely blanking on it. It's all good. The, sh- <laughs> the, the Firbolg of the Shar? The Shar, yeah. Um, oh, and he just, oh, uh, well, the Firbolgs, well, you'll, you'll find out in your research. I'll, I'll bring what I can. That's appreciated. Um, and also in the market for uh, any sort of uh, information about um, any sort of demonic happenings, specifically in the high forest. Demonic happenings in the high forest. Or even just um, arcane happenings. Oh, am I back? You're back. Yeah, all good. Great. All right. Fixing that up. My internet's a little shaky, so if it drops again, I'm just gonna switch it back over to my iPad. No worries. Mm-hmm. There we go. Okay. What happens when you go into Undermountain? So sorry. I know. What was it you said you were looking Bad for? Bad reception down there. Um. <laughs> oh, sorry. Myself or? Yeah. Uh, yeah just uh, demonic stuff in the high forest and like kind of high forest in general. Yeah, high forest in general, arcane, so, like basically any weird, spooky tales coming out of the high forest. Sure. Right. Or maps of the high forest. Okay. And you see him kind of just a. Oh, that's going to be quite an, uh, quite 
a trip. I'll I'll get some assistance with that. Um, and you can see he's kind of clearly thinking about a lot of books to bring. Mm. Cool. Um, if there's like a Sparks notes or anything on these, it's also appreciated. <laughs> um, I have a couple more things I'd like to ask about. Do you want to know now, or should we ask you once these this round is done? Uh, well, uh, are you going to be researching together, or are you doing your own studies? I think... I mean, um, sorry, meta. Last yeah. time we did it in pairs, that was kind of the effective way to do it. Yeah, so in pairs, it's that you get to research over the course of an hour a single topic, um, and you both mm -hmm. get to make a check based on that specific topic. If you're doing it single, then you're only making your own check, and it takes you two hours to do the research. Right. Yeah. I don't mind, like, I have a couple things that Elise wants to research that aren't necessarily group-oriented, so I'm happy to, like, help with the group stuff and then wrap mine up, or if anyone wants to help me find stuff. It's not something I'm trying to hide. I'm just... Just things that are more interesting to her. Yeah, yeah well, that's that's fair. I'm uh, yeah, I can help out at all. Sure, I'd appreciate that. But I can help with this this round of what, what we find. Especially sounds like it's going to be a lot. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll might have to make some choices on this. Yeah. Did we talk with the doctor about when we would be meeting? Him um, long oh, long. yeah. We'll say like what if it, we know it kind of takes it like maybe two hours from now. Yeah, like I, morning, in my like, mind, we were kind of spending like the morning and like then leaving the afternoon and evening for yeah. going down. We're meeting up for lunch at uh, the Yawning Portal. Well, yeah, maybe yeah. if we got here at a reasonable morning time, it gives us like maybe three or four hours even if we need yeah, it. Yeah, I was Just thinking. Up back in the inn. Yeah, okay. All right, so, so starting off with those two topics. With the four of us, then we've got Topics? Um, yeah, I have two, but um, I can Good also cope with you guys. Um, uh, I think did we say they're gonna chill at the? Uh, nice and... Yeah, oh, they taking a, a rest day. Jason laryngitis again. Gotta really stop uh, our sea shanties in the evening. Anyways, is do too much karaoke? It really it's, hurts their throat. We really uh, it was a thing we picked up in Fireshare and. They they went whole hog with it. It's been a uh, it's really been something. Hmm. Alrighty, so starting off with those two topics, um, so you see Savant Savenius end up uh, disappearing, and he's gone for a good six minutes or so, five minutes, quite a while, nice. and eventually comes back, and you see that there are three assistants flanking him as they Ooh. bring in <laughs> massive stacks of books um, on all the topics that you requested. Um, now, there is a lot of information, but they do start weeding out some of it based on the additional conversations that you have, so it kind of shortens it down to about the amount that you'd be able to flip through at a casual level for about an hour and maybe find one or two specific passages that would be worth uh, of any interest. Okay. May I have a question? Um, after Savant walks away and once we're kind of alone in the room, mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll be right back, you guys. And then I'd like to... So, like, you, you kind of described it like we walked past the room that we were in before and it looked like it was occupied. Yeah, so essentially it's a, a single very long hallway. Uh, and the hallway that you walked through originally, you just see all the stacks of books on either side. And it goes on for a good six or seven stacks. And then eventually into a pod of six large square rooms. And the one that you were that you had been in before, because you kind of went there later in the day, it looked like most of them had already been vacated. Uh, the one that you were in before the first room, um, the first one on the very left-hand side, it was currently occupied. The door was just closed to the room. Okay, can I go and, like, see if I can open the door silently and peek and see who's in there? Sure, go and make a self check. Leaf's just, like, reading, but where the hell did Lura go? <laughs> use those rogue skills. Going to use the bathroom. Thank you. Familiar dice. Dice cream. Yeah. Dice. That will be a 25. 25, yeah. Easily enough, you slip out the side of the door, uh, silently close it behind beside you, walk the 10, 15 feet or so down the hallway, and eventually the door comes up on your right, and you're able to just test the handle. Just make a quick sleight of hand check for me on the handle. Uh, dirty 20. Dirty 20. Um, yeah, easily enough. You just kind of twist the handle at exactly the right amount, find the catch point and very silently push the door in and you kind of just 
poke your head in and you're able to see that there is firelight on the sides. Uh, looks like candlelight on the walls. Uh, and then sitting at one of the tables is just a relatively unassuming uh, human man. Looks like he's poring over a series of books and he's got a fairly young girl beside him. Probably in her early early teens, if that. Probably younger. Okay. Can I see any of the books and what they're reading about? Not without really opening the door. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll leave it at that. Okay. Do it again. Do any of the other rooms look like they're occupied? No, all the doors are uh, unlocked and ajar to the other rooms with all the lights okay. out. Okay, that's what I wanted to do. Okay, all right, so you easily... And I'll uh, slink back to our, our room. <laughs> no worries, you easily slink back inside. So, a couple minutes pass, uh, the massive st stacks of books come in, and they start weeding through some of the ones that are probably not as necessary for you. Um, as they do that, uh, we'll start off, Who, uh, Laura, who do you want to get you to help with your topic? Um, I, I mean, my topic was, like, for Volks, so I guess, who wants to help on this? What what are the two, first two topics that were... So the first two topics are Furbolgs, and then the High Forest and anything demon-specific, so that's kind of lumped into one. I was going to say that perhaps I should do the one that's sort of, like, land-based. Land I know it's more about the history rather than tracking, but if there is anything about the area, it might, I might be able to pinpoint something. I think, Lee, it'll, it'll be best if you have that first-hand knowledge. So why don't you and I take that topic like we did that last time? That makes sense, yeah. Okay, so let Lass and Elith. Elith with the, with the demon research? With the, the Holy Forest, the history and the... That's the one we're talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Les, um, are you okay helping... Oh, what? And he's just like, he's kind of lo looking over at some other books and he's just like, huh? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. No, I'll do that. Duh. Yeah. Yeah, not my area of expertise, but um, let's try and get down to it. Beauty. All right, we'll start off with Allura and Leaf. I'll get you guys to go ahead and make an investigation check for me, please. Ee hoo. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Nice. I got a 16. It's all one. Oh, that was not a... That was not a... There we go. There... Oh, no. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh, not good. Um, investigation? Yeah. Okay. 13. 13. Okay. Um, so, Allura, you, you kind of pouring through a little bit. You, you seem to find just more, like, general information on Furbolgs. Um, they had a family-centered, clan-based society. Tended to live in settlements and remote, hilly, or forested areas. Um, the settlements were typically strongholds. So they had wooden structures built from the trees around them rather than inhabiting cavern complexes dug into the hillside. So very much closer to how the elves tended to live versus how the dwarves lived underground. Um, the clan settlements were small usually having four and 16 members, um, usually had a shaman or a druid, someone kind of in touch with the local nature surrounding uh, the settlement. And they tended to use innate magical ability of Furbolgs to ensure that their homes remained a secret to outsiders. Um, oh, fuck. Yeah. Um, there are some reports as well of nomadic Furbolg clans. So rather than settling in a specific forest, um, they lived as caretakers of the woods wherever they stayed. So they would live off the land, being very resourceful, making sure to maintain balance wherever they called home, even if it was only temporary, essentially making sure to minimize their impact on the environment that surrounded them. Um, more things no. as well. Oh, sorry. You froze. Oh, I froze? Um, Am I back? Good now. Yeah, everything's good cool. Now. Okay. You're good to me. Weird. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so uh, the last thing is that most Furbolg tribes tended to prefer isolation from other races, right? They avoided politics, they avoided struggles of modern society. Um, if intruders entered their territory, they would usually try an indirect approach, to causing the invaders to leave. Um, they would drive game away to discourage hunters, redirect streams or forest trails to try and confuse people so they couldn't find their camp again. Um, <laughs> You know, kind of general things just to encourage people to think that the, the woods were mistrusting of them. Um, but if these methods failed, the Furbolgs 
did at last confront the outsiders, always hoping to relieve uh, to resolve things peacefully, right? If the outsiders were open to this, they would simply ask them to leave. But if they sem seemed evil or clearly had no concern for the forest lands, chopping down trees, taking what they wanted without any regard to how it balanced the ecosystem, um, the Furbolgs had a size and strength advantage, right? They were giant kin, uh, so they were usually able to remove them forcefully. That's kind of what you would tend to find out in your research. Um, Leaf, you would end up finding things that went a little bit further. You would actually find a book specifically outlining the Furbolg Code. Um, and the Furbolg Code is written in the giant language. Do you speak giant? Uh, I do. I speak it. Uh, yeah. Perfect. So, yeah. So, if you yeah. read it, um, the giant language uses the dwarven uh, runes. Uh, oh, okay. Dwarven um, uh, symbols, I should say. Uh, yeah. Dor Dorvan script. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, and in giant, translated into common, uh, the verbal code is bravery, effort, and honor over birth. The tribe's honor over yours. The blood of the runt is the blood of a king. Give a thousand for nothing. And truth is the honor of the tribe. Well then, this is uh, <laughs> some insightful reading. I didn't realize uh, where it came from. They uh, really had it laid out like that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and there's a series of citations underneath as well. You end up diving a little bit further into the code itself. Um, that the Furbolgs had rejected the customary social order amongst giants and giant kin. Um, this is referred to as the ordining. They preferred to exercise free will by using a system they created, which is this code. Um, it was conceived in ancient times. Exact origins are not recorded by the modern races. Um, but a written copy is usually required to be carried by all Furbolgs. Uh, but the exact implementation varied from one community to another. It just tended to promote the idea that society was the most important aspect of a verbal culture, right? It superseded any individual, any individual's needs. Uh, actions were always seen as more important than relatives or heritage. And if the code was breached, mm. a verbal would be banished from their clan without exception. So the implications of the code meant that Furbolgs would treat all intelligent creatures as equals. They did not exhibit superior attitudes that other giants had. Um, for every decision made, they considered the effects on the world around them and the rest of the natural world. During a famine, they would rather go hungry rather than strain the land to the point that it would not survive. Mm -hmm. So it was a very self-sacrificing society and everything being based around that no one is better than another, no thing is greater than any of the, its parts. It was always the matter of the whole versus the individual. Interesting. Oh, huh. okay. Oh, well, that's, uh, that's uh, I'm going to have to think about that one. Yeah. All right. So that's kind of what you guys figure out on Furbolgs. Yeah. Quite a good bit of information over the course of your yeah. album. Was there anything specific about uh, Furbolgs traveling here from Shar? From the Shar? Um, not specifically coming up from the Shar, but the knowledge there as well of um, the Furbolg uh, tending to prefer isolation and some of them being nomadic. It would make sense that some of them would have eventually traveled up from the southern parts of, uh, of Toril. Hmm. Okay. All right, uh, so for Les and Aleth, I'll get you guys to go ahead and make your investigation checks, please. Woohoo! Nat 20! Oh, shit. Oh. Okay. So 25. Yeah. 25? Les? Yeah. Uh, 12. 12? All right. Um, so, Les, starting off with the simple stuff, the high forest is a big forest. It's a it really is. big forest. It is one Holy of... Holy shit! one of, if not the largest forest uh, across all of Faerun. And it's a remnant of the days when Faerun was covered in green and elves. Giants and dragons ruled the world and the elves lived in balance with them. Uh, the forest was a vast region, bounded by the nether mountains in the north and the high moor to the south, which you already know because you had kind of been in that area. Uh, to the west was the Evermoors, and the east was a massive, vast desert of Anorak. Uh, the eastern border of the High Forest lay against the Dalimbir Vale, through which flows the Dalimbir River. So that was the river that you guys had been on, and the one that you had seen coming south, and then eventually heading west. 
Uh, there are quite a few notable locations within the High Forest as well, a lot of them very well explored. Um, the Star Mountains is a very common one, a lot of hiking trails up there, and a lot of adventurers wanting to go up the Star Mountains to find any relics of days past that are lost amongst the mountains. Uh, it also provides the headwaters of the Unicorn Run, that stream that came down that eventually joined up with the Dilembia River, as well as the Heartblood River. Um, there's a series of lost peaks in the northwest that form the headwaters of another river. Um, but one of the more notable locations to you that you kind of seem to resonate with um, is what's referred to as the Grandfather Tree. And the Grandfather Tree mm. is an ancient tree, hundreds if not thousands of years old, untouched in one of the deepest recesses of the High Forest. Uh, it's an area that a lot of adventurers will travel from the south uh, to kind of like the northwestern edge of the tree. And it's quite well explored overall, but it's very much revered as one of the most naturally balanced places within the forest. Very few outside forces seem to put strain on this area, but the tree kind of stands alone in a very large, large, large opening uh, open in the canopy. And it stands uh, well above any of the other trees that surround it. Big fuck off tree. All right. Pretty much. Um, among the known inhabitants of the woods, uh, there are a series of races that are not commonly seen outside of them. Uh, you have centaurs, you have drow, a few elves and humans, gnomes, uh, but you also run into some of the darker races, things like gnolls, orcs, uh, pixies, satyrs, treants, even the occasional unicorn. Unicorns are cool. Yeah. Uh, the few humans who dwell there, Typically, you're looking at rangers, druids, adventurers, people who are willing to live off the land uh, and survive in wild environments because trade with the outside world was infrequent at best, right? Typically, you went there for a reason. You were there to seclude yourself, live in a self-sufficient environment, and find plentiful resources. But excursions to the forests, daytime, maybe two or three or week-long excursions, were fairly common for those wanting to explore the area and make their way to some of the fabled locations of the past. All right, so that's pretty much what you find out on yours. Uh, Elith on a DC-25. <clears throat> so, you find that in addition to all these massive tomes where, you know, a couple of the scholars are just helping less pour through the information, just, you know, kind of generally common knowledge bits here and there, you end up finding a fairly thin uh, book. And it doesn't appear to be a journal, but it does outline kind of some of the intricacies, specifically as you had related uh, with demonic uh, interactions within the High Forest. Um, and there is a note here that this book uh, de uh, denotes a, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, an encounter that occurred almost uh, 700 years ago. Um, in the year 18 820 Dale Reckoning, so it's currently 1495, so in 820, um, there was a wizard that began to summon devils to his home city that was referred to as Askalhorn. Can you, so I'm really sorry to be a pain. Can you spell that? Yeah, so Askelhorn is A-S-C-A-L uh -huh. and then Horn, H-O-R-N. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he began to summon devils to his city and he was a fairly powerful wizard. But about 60, year late, 60 years later, over the course of uh, two generations, mages had been corrupted by rogues, uh, what are referred to as Feyri, F-E-Y, apostrophe R-I. And Feyri are a hybrid elven subrace that had been spliced with demonic origins. So typically winged elves, long, uh, sharp pointed tails, claws on their hands in comparison to the typical elven features. Does that um, description kind of sound to me like it's a similar to the creature that we saw except for it, instead of being like elves spliced with demons, they were Dragons spliced with demons? Fairly similar, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so those Feyri began conjuring full demons to the city. So in comparison to uh, the wizard summoning devils, uh, they took things into the more um, chaotic side, taking demons out of their home plane, rather than devils being the ones that honored uh, order and, um, and the rule of law. The, de the demons were more hell-bent on destruction and just causing chaos. Okay. 
So in that time, there were two fiendish forces that ravaged the city of Askelhorn, uh, with the demons emerging victorious over the devils. And they continued down the Delambir Vale, ushering a dwarven city and the elven nation uh, nearby. I'll give you the names for these uh, on Slack because they're super yeah. fun. Um, but eventually okay. they caused the destruction of both a dwarven city and a massive elven nation, one of the largest that, exi that has existed across all of Faerun. And eventually the city of Askelhorn uh, became to be known as the Hellgate Keep following the demonic occupation and the gate itself allowing the, these demons to escape their home plane. Um, does the book say anything about where where Askelhorn was? Like where its location would be now? Um, it does not. Because the, uh, because the topography of the high forest has changed so much you know this being almost 700 years ago um there isn't a huge amount of correlation or 600 years ago um there isn't a huge amount of correlation between what it was then and what the high forest has become now as human expanse has caused the forest to shrink um it tended to be that the city was on the northern side of the mountains that exist in the center of the high forest which i believe are the star mounts let me just double check uh, I want to make sure. Yeah, uh, so it tended to exist more on the northern side of the Star Mounts, uh, kind of northeast in the depths of the High Forest, away from any of the rivers. Um, and very, very, actually, sorry, I apologize. Very, very far northeast corner of the High Forest. Uh, specifically just below the nether mountains. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so the last couple of notes are within the book. Uh, it seemed to be added in a different type of script. Uh, it looks like they were references that were added much later than the original accounts were. Um, and that nearly 500 years later, sometime about uh, about 100 years ago from now, maybe 120 years ago from the current date, uh, many of the wood elves from Evermeet, uh, which is an area much uh, further, I believe it's north? I'm trying to remember where Evermeet is. But uh, anyways, they, they traveled from Evermeet, uh, and they tried to migrate back into the High Forest and sought to reestablish the Elven Kingdom that was destroyed during these uh, demon versus devil uh, fights that occurred within the High Forest. Um, standing in their way, however, were the Orcs, the Gnolls, and a massive alliance of Faerie from Hellgate Keep. And the effort continued and continues to this day, uh, now under the leadership of, a, of an individual referred to as the Lady of the Wood, uh, and her name is Morgwes. Uh, Morgwes. M O R G W A I S. Better than Lesgwes. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. So, dip your waiter. Try the veal. <laughs> he was so, the leader of this sort of like um, unholy cabal of. So yeah. she, she is the current leader of the Wood Elves that are trying to regain oh, the Elven okay. City. Um, they're trying to take back the alliance of Fairy that had taken over Hellgate Keep. Now this entry does appear to be dated about 60 years ago, so there's a chance this may have already succeeded, but hmm. you're not entirely sure. What was the name of the destroyed civil Elven civilization, did it say? Uh, it did. So the Dwarven City that was destroyed, um, I'll send you just here. Uh, da, da, da. I'll send this to you on Slack just because it, it takes too long to do it elsewise. Okay, cool. no problem. Man, we're getting, we're getting the goods. I got us the war dump, y'all. Heck yeah. Told you Did guys. you know that High Forest has a giant tree? So big. The biggest tree I've ever heard of. <laughs> I do love trees, but I think I've got something here. Better than a big tree. I that's hard to That's believe. pretty cool, Les. Um, I've well, been so finding out that uh, my people are really intense. That's kind of cool. 
Intense? Do they have big trees around them as well? No, they mostly just live in tents. It's pretty cool. <laughs> so sorry. Just take a residence in this tree. Looks like there's a lot of room inside of it. Uh. Um, what last question? Probably not. I'm just kind of reaching for it. But yeah. did it say anything about what kind of like weapons or tactics any of the elves or dwarves were using against the fairy or you know, the demons or devils? No, it didn't. It more so spoke about the events that transpired because the the attack from the Feyri was so long ago that any notes about specifics would have been far lost. It was more so that some of the elves shared this knowledge of their past. Um, and then the modern uh, edition in there, the one that's a little bit more recent, um, just seems to be more of some of the wood elves that were passing through Waterdeep and wanting to uh, lay their mark and let uh, people know who were researching this, that this was something they were attempting to do. So the wood elves came in and they were like, and furthermore, we are headed. <laughs> yeah. Essentially, yeah, because there are there are scholars on any level of different society and all the different races. There are people who always want their things to be recorded because if they're successful, they can come back and amend that. But if they're not, people will know that somebody had attempted to do so again. Just like us. Nice. Essentially cool. telling the truth of history rather than trying to rewrite it. Cool. So mm. as I find this book... I'll like share the information with the group and show them what I found. That's pretty exciting. I mean, that's a lot for us to go off of. We already know now, you know, if there's some people, I mean, at least even if we go to the Evermeet, we know that there's elves that have gone from there into the high forest. Well, I mean, I'm thinking maybe not today, but it might be worth trying to see what happened to Morgwais and the elves um, to see if they ran into any you know, demonic opposition. Um, and if they did what tactics they used, if they had anything that worked particularly well, or if they had any more information about, it seems, I mean, it, it seems like maybe it was a different area than um, Sucumber, I'm not sure, but there is definitely history there. Definitely. Hmm. And then I'll share them with them as well, my hunch. I think the fairy, they sound kind of like the same kind of creature as, shit, what the fuck is that? Abishai? Uh, Abishai, but with elven origin instead of draconic, thank you. Oh. It's on the tip someone's of my tongue. Been, someone's been mixing these things. That's uh doesn't really bode well for us. Yeah, so um Yeah, made some headway. No, oh, that's good. Um is there anything else we want to look up or should we meet up with the doctor and see if we can get any info any further information down so in the I wanted Sorry, to... you guys. I've been muted for a long time. I said a lot of things. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh, we're... Allura, you're in the other room. We, we kind of heard you mumbling. Were you just like, I why just are you texting me? And me and was like, are you muted? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oops. Allura, what do you think? Um, yeah, basically, I'm saying, like... <laughs> I'm sorry. Basically, I was agreeing with you and saying, yeah, we should probably do all those things, and there's lots of parallels, and yeah. That's super cool, and I'm sorry, Aleth, I just realized we, you know, if we've still got some time, do some research for the stuff you were interested in. Well, I think one more thing we were thinking of looking up was looking up Amelior's history, although, um, you know, I'm no, not sure if you guys think that's essential or not. I wanted to look up a couple things. Um you know, some of it can wait till the next time we're back in town. It's not super urgent, but I did want to look up um, the elf at the weapons shop mentioned to me that in the fight against, you know, demons, devils, that sort of thing, there were like elvish weapons crafted um, to do, I think, he, radiant damage he employed. Um, and there were sort of legendary bows and weapons. And I kind of wanted to see if there was anything, any information on that. I know it seems kind of a long shot, but... If there's anything we can find that can actually do damage against these things, it'd be helpful. Yeah, yeah. That, that makes sense. So how do we want to split this if there's if we're doing another round for another hour? I'm well, fine with whoever needs help. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll look up the bows and things, but... Um, Just not, not to be me as well, but... Do um, looking up Amelior's history, or is that, you know, not... I mean, as long as we're here, we might as well. Sorry, I'm hearing a whisper from a higher power. What's going on, Shorty? Um, sorry, it was 
It was just the um because based oh, on Jordy's all frozen. The... No. Oh, no. Now he is actually frozen. Ah. Stable and Quick, I everyone say silly back. things about Jordy. He. I should be back. Fucking like jazz. There, there we go. go. Oh, oh. There, there you go. go. I'm back. Um, not to metagame or anything, but based on the topics that you guys had sent me in the Slack as well, there were quite a few other topics. You had uh, the wars within the Nine Hells, um, so asking about any wars that had taken place there. Um, you were also looking at uh, awakening of magic within individuals. Um, you were looking at the... Um, do, 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 do. Uh, specifically, Leaf, you also wanted to know more about Eldath. There's quite a few other things, so it's kind of up to you guys if it was fine and y'all yeah. like spending some time researching. I think it's worth it. Um, yeah, you're kind of there the anyway. Is, so the other thing is, I will say, a lot of this information is pretty dated. It doesn't seem to be a lot of recent entries into things. If we were to go to the Undermount and Undercity and talk to people who could probably be more connected with finding these types of weapons or any kind of up-to-date information, that might be the best bet as well. I mean, I, mean, I do think researching when it comes to ancient, like, legendary elven weapons is probably a good place to start, and then we can... My uh, thought is, you know, maybe we do another round, another hour. I don't know how long the doctor's going to be holding our table. Um, then catch up the with tavern. him. I'm tapping my watch and looking at yeah, What the hell? <laughs> um, well, maybe... He didn't know we were going to the library, though. Oh, so... good, I froze. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It's a metaphor for what your character is doing. Cool. Um, so, yeah, sorry, do we want to... Yeah. Like, I'm... I don't know. The stuff that I was going to look up, like, I think the stuff that's the most pertinent to our search right now i've mm -hmm. gotten so if there's anything i can help with and then uh yeah. so we also have to talk, think about if once we finish this um task for lady silverhand we have to give back the signets and when we give back the signets we won't have access to the library anymore so, so i think we, we might have take a long time want to research we should do it. We we said we'd be here for about four hours. Mm -hmm. We've spent an hour, so if we want to do another couple hours, I think that, that we should just do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think we probably have time for another, at least one more session here, but I think you're right, Allura, we may as well get the information while we can. Oh my gosh, our cameras are super out of whack. <laughs> Doctor disappeared. Yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, we're going back. Um... <laughs> I'm just gonna. Oh, there we go. We're back. Hooray. Cool. Um, okay, so what was the next round of stuff we wanted to look up? Uh, ah, I see. I tuned in on an exciting part. <laughs> <laughs> right? Crack a book. Um, we're looking up the ancient elven weapons. We're going on the D and D wiki against, right now. <laughs> against uh, demonic forces and. We are looking up Amelior's history. I think right now is that unless you you just want to, um, you know, uh, there's some inspiration from above about some other things we could look up as well. Um, I mean, those are the two things that I think would sort of we know something that Amelior's done is important to this, and you know, anything to help our fight helps. I'm definitely interested in his trip to the High Forest. I mean, hopefully, we get a chance to talk to him again and ask about it. Yeah, because his trip to the High Forest seems to be the thing that they were looking for, that account, that specific account. So if we can have, we can get a little bit of, maybe that account was transcribed onto another book here, right? Uh, like, I know it's a slim chance, but maybe there's a little bit of information about his travels and... Wait, or if someone went with him, maybe it was like a yeah. study? Okay, yeah, I think I think it's probably worth it. Sorry, Jordy, because I know you didn't prep for this. Oh, no, I did. I prepped for everything. Don't worry. It's literally whatever you guys want to research. That's the best part. <laughs> we just went on Slack, though, didn't we? Didn't matter. I don't think okay. so. No, this those, those were just... Yeah, th Today. those were just more things that you guys specifically were into. Amelior has been part of this story for a while. Don't worry. Yeah, for sure. Okay. 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 Yeah, I think... I'd be keen to look up uh, Amelior if somebody wants to help me with that. 
Okay, we can help with that. Thanks, Leave. Okay, uh, so with you two asking for Amelia or Amanitas, um, you see the scholars kind of look at each other and just kind of like have questioning looks at you, like, who? Oh. Like, do you have more information that you could give them to narrow it down? Like, who he is, is, what he's done, where he lives? He's oh, look, a biography, but Amelia <laughs> And they just kind Too of... Too many cats. Uh, they just kind of, oh, uh, Sakamba. Uh, we'll see what we can find. I think and he's they, about really the only magical the guy that... Sage of Sakamba. Did somebody already say that? Yeah, yeah. It, and they, they, yeah. they noted Sakamber and were just like, oh, okay, and just kind of disappeared and uh, bring, brought back a couple of books, probably only four or five. Was there something specific you wanted to say? I was going to say, with an asterisk of Rainbow Cats. Rainbow Cats, okay. Um, and they end up coming back with about four or five books, much smaller tomes. <laughs> Um, there seems to be one that is just the history of Sacomber, um, and then a couple of others kind of chatting about a f few of the different occurrences that have uh, happened. Um, and these ones are pretty straightforward. I I'll just get you guys to roll investigation checks for me. Well, heck yeah, I got an 18. Yo, show it's such a D&D &D game. Laura rolling big numbers tonight. And does a little, like, spin with her dagger. And well, are you all right there? It seems. All right. Because that was a natural one. <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't really know if this is worth inspiring yourself on, but all right. <laughs> I just rolled two ones in a row, so that's. A, I rolled a one on the sticks too. Nice. Allura uh, finds a coloring book. <laughs> <laughs> an eleven. <laughs> It's it's the back of a. Uh, it's that's pretty good for two ones. That's not too bad. Uh, Leaf, what was yours? Uh, Eighteen. Eighteen total. Thank you so yeah. much. All right. You got a uh, you you got the back of the kids menu from the singing harp, the three string harp or seven string I look harp. At all of the pictures and all of the four books we got. <laughs> Can pretty you much. color each of the cats? <laughs> These are their names. Do you remember the <laughs> colors? <laughs> You connect the dots and it's Amelia's tower. Um, between the two of you... To, they're going to have to update that one. Yeah. Oh, boy. Um, between the two of you, it really doesn't take long to go through these books. You're kind of used to speed nice. reading, looking for specific pieces of information. Um, and you're flipping through and you find that Sacomber is a small, peaceful town. It's essentially a border town between the western heartlands and the more savage north along the Sword Coast. Um, it has a number of colorful gardens that sit atop stone hills. Um, directly great. south of it is the High Moor. It goes into the town judiciary, talking about um, the elders of the, villa of the city, the people who over look uh, how the city is governed uh, it talks about the Lord's Alliance being present within the city for the better part of a few decades and eventually there is kind of a small footnote of uh, notable citizens of Sicomber uh, and Amelior Amanitas is third down the list uh, and he is the and his uh, footnote is that he is the self-proclaimed sage of Sicomber uh, he is a 60-ish year old human wizard who calls the city home and has lived there for over 30 years with his multicolored cats in a self-constructed stone tower. Oh god, that's so annoying. I hate cool. it so much. What are oh. the other people on the list of uh, notable people in Sucumber? They all um, died like 50 years ago. Yeah, so they actually are all people who've passed away, but they were noticeable. They were no noted as what are referred to as the Rods of Justice. Uh, and they were <laughs> respected elders who were elected every four years. So they just seem to be different... Um, kind of uh, town officials, city officials that had been uh, nominated and elected to the local governing body. Uh, I just gotta run, I gotta go to quick, uh, quick, uh, Trent's gotta go take a quick bathroom break. I'll be right back. Keep reading the book. Okay, <laughs> go, go for it. At least I'll get I'll you to roll an advantage for the Make check sure to wash your hands. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, overall, Amelior, like, he's not exactly noted anywhere. He seems to be powerful. He's definitely a wizard of some kind, but... Um, it looks to be that whatever information is known about him, with him having called the city home for over 30 years, he's not exactly well known in circles okay. outside of his own. Interesting. Okay. All right. Oh. All right. So if that's you guys. Yeah. If we didn't find yeah, shit all on so. Like we could. Um 
can I ask them if there's any like records from wizard schools that might? <laughs> There very, there very well may be, but those records would not be kept here. You would be going to the library at Candlekeep for anything of that nature. Candlekeep every time. Maybe we can, you know, maybe there's some wizards in Undermountain that might know the guy. <laughs> wizards in Undermountain. That just hey, I wasn't talking to you. Right. Come on. <laughs> okay, All thank right. you for your help, uh, Savant. Uh, all right. Thank you. So for Elith, uh, the the crew is ready. They take the series of books out and they're ready to research. What is it you're looking into? Um, sorry, I just rolled it anyway. But uh, so like Elven weapons. Um, right. Yeah. Elven weapons. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um. So yeah. So go ahead and roll. We'll say at advantage because Kevin's not back. That's what I did, and okay. I rolled it. So it's twenty four in total. Twenty four in total. Okay. Um. So there are some accounts. Uh, they end up bringing in a couple of books specifically relating to, funnily enough, the same demonic wars that had taken place, uh, and referring to the ones that were existing within the high forest. Um. The specific one uh, that they're referring to is uh, a weapon that was found. <clears throat> excuse me. Or a weapon that was. Uh, noted as being used during these wars where the elves were trying to protect themselves from the invading demons and devils uh, in the elven nation of Erlan, which is the name that I had sent you, Air Erlan. Okay. Um, and one of the weapons that was referred to uh, was specifically wielded by a very powerful elven prince, um, and it was referred to as the Bow of the Elven Prince. And the Bow of the Elven Prince was one where the uh, the prince himself never carried any ammunition of any kind. He was always wanting to be as light on his feet as possible. Um, but the bow itself drew from his power and created arrows of blazing light that it was able to attack uh, enemies with. And it was also noted that this prince uh, always had a dryad companion near him. Uh, and it seemed to be something that some would say he would be walking through a grove um, and the the dryad would not be there, but he would pass by a single tree and then the dryad would suddenly have appeared seemingly to meld out from within the bow. That's fucking cool. Yeah. So that was an item that was referred to uh, and known, granted, several hundred years ago. Um, and with this group of wood elves attempting to make their way into the city, it may have been recovered by their society, but... It, the the bow seemed to have been lost in the war that took place uh, and eventually led the fairy to Hellgate Keep. Okay, there's no mention of where it might be. No. It was more so that the bow was noted as being used um, and then some of the abilities that the bow had, but no idea where it would be now, almost 700 years later. Okie dokie. That's sick, though. It's a pretty cool one. All right. It's at least radar is like ping. <laughs> I found the thing that I want. Yeah. yeah. All right. So with that wrapping up uh, the second hour of research, um, did you guys want to head out or did you want to keep going? Um, I'm good to head out, I think. Good to head out? Yeah, how's everyone else feeling? I think so. There was one more thing that um, I want to research before we give our sigils back, but it's not, it's not necessarily something that needs to happen right now. Definitely. Um, we're going to need to come back into town to give the sigils yeah. back anyway, so we can do it before then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that I think may be useful for us to do one more would be the past history of any civil conflicts in the Nine Hells. So what do you think? Or should My we thought is we're not... If all four of you were working on that, it, like if there was only one topic, you could probably push it out in half an hour. So it's kind of up to you. Yeah. Um, I'm more thinking of like there's anything that ever happened before with people revolting against Tiamat. But we don't have to. Yeah, I think that that's not necessarily imperative to like right now. I do think that that's something that we should research, but I definitely think that once we've got more research, that will be more relevant. There, there might be more information that we can go from and actually get something a bit more related. Because right now we're still casting a pretty wide net. Yeah, we can sort of keep that topic in our pockets when we come back. Definitely. Yeah. Did you to find any cool weapons, please? Oh yeah. So. Um, I found this, uh, I wanted to say recipe, <laughs> record <laughs> of this really cool bow that was used in the war um, that the elves had in Erlan. 
Um, and it seems like the guy who wielded it was able to like just fire this sort of like blazing light energy and never even had to use arrows. And he, the bow had That's like so cool. a dryad in it, like a dryad friend that he got to hang out with. <laughs> That's That's cool. So Laura kind of goes a little bit glazy and, and she she kind of looks at her rapier and then like is clearly very sad missing the sun sword. Oh yeah, the sun sword was dope. The sun sword was so sick. Cool. Um, should we get less from the bathroom? He's been in there for like mm-hmm. in game time, at least 30 minutes. I'm a little worried. <laughs> and then uh, shall we meet up with uh, the doctor? Yeah, I'm starving. Let's go get some grub and let him know what we've learned. Cool. So I guess we leave an open pile of books with us some odd. <laughs> Have a good Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you so much, Savon. Really appreciate all the help. It's much appreciated. And we uh, we'll be working with uh, Lady Silverhand, but we don't know how long. Is there uh, a, a way for our group to gain access to the library without signets? And is there a uh, limited assets that we can get if we um, promise to be on the hunt at all times for texts such as that? Along with a... The, the promise would be accompanied by some gold, of course. Yeah, I just saw my audio. I apologize. Um, quick thing for the chat. Uh, they don't accept gold. They only need books, and they don't do anything on promises. Cool. Sorry, I accidentally muted myself somehow. Oops. Um, Technical Okay, difficult. so I guess while we're walking to the yawning portal? Yep. Um, can I... I'm going to turn to the group. Hey, um, what, were, what exactly were all the spells in uh, Casimir's sister's... Uh, book. Um, yeah, like, I'm not sure. You can look if you want. And I'll was look. was teleport in there? Was teleport in the book? Uh, yeah. Let me find out. Because I mean, we can probably. We have the we have the ability. To, we just have to find someone who can do it. If if we have the book, yeah. Yeah. Or if if it's in there. to find this one it is yeah, buried no 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 it's all good it's a good thing to yeah. look up i just i know exactly yeah, where it is i just have to find it um do, do, do. i thought i had it written down yeah. oh no it's in my other book my, my book. Yeah. Um, it's okay i know exactly where it is i'm just trying to find the right name blah 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 so allura elise have you guys been to uh anything have you been to underground before oh. i've never been to water deep before so i've never been okay to- to Undermount specifically, but I have been to places such as what I hear Undermount like. Is there anything I, you know, should maybe do to be, not really draw attention to myself or blend in a little? I mean, not, I mean, without knowing what they're going to look like down there, it's hard to say how they're going to, how to blend in. Some places want to look as um, kind of uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Sorry. Um, 
like normal, usual as possible. And some of them are, it's, everyone's so different and outlandish that you stand out if you're not the same. So. Interesting. The one thing I will say is don't take anything anyone telling you at face value. Don't trust anyone down there. And we all need to keep, like we all need to kind of cover each other's backs and keep our eyes open for each other because we don't know what's, what or who is going to be down there. I don't. Maybe they'll but, be really nice. The doctor hasn't even been down there and he seems to be quite um, experienced in water deep. So that gives me pause. I am looking forward to a change of pace myself. Leaf, one more thing is watch your purse. Oh, and I kind of look at this uh, extravagant. Oh, okay. I'll put my I'll kind of push my fanny pack around. Okay. <laughs> and it's specifically bulging with a substantial amount of coin. Uh, okay, I uh, should have converted this to paper. Shit. Um, um, so yeah. I, I did just send you guys on Slack the spell list. Um, it does yeah. have teleport on it as a seven level oh, spell. Shit. Okay. So we just gotta pay off some wizard. We just have to find a wizard. So there needs to be a wizard, not only a wizard who, uh, no, sorry, not only a wizard, but a wizard who is powerful enough to cast a seventh level spell. Teleport is no joke. Sure, what? we can find one. What level is teleport? Seventh, seventh level. level. Like, sorry, what? What level? What do level you do you have to be to be able to cast it? I, I think mean, it's level like, fifteen or something like that. It might be even higher. Um, like we're we're probably there isn't going to be like areas where it's like level ten and up only. Like we'll uh, probably, probably seven, I was hoping right, we find one of those in the under, but I guess not. <laughs> Sorry, seven level spell uh, for wizard is specifically actually level thirteen. Perfect. Okay. These guys can't be that strong. How Just a little stronger than us? <laughs> exactly. Did we ask Amelior if he's like interested in learning new spells? I don't no, really think we got that far with him. We didn't ask him if he could learn it. No one really trusted him, which sort of... Yeah, you, you endeared yourself to him because you loved his cats, and then you all started to distrust him, and then you started to trust him again, and then you really didn't trust him, and then he almost died. That's, Lord, never trust him. That's the cycle of most NPCs in this campaign, so that's fair. <laughs> that's true. Okay. Um, Are we back at the... Uh... Yeah, so you would have made your way back to the yawning portal. So, Doctor, did you want to have uh, try to engage uh, Jared? He seemed to yeah. just be sitting at the table. Yeah, yeah, I'll uh, I'll pull up to Jared. I just real quick, does he? Uh, how how's he looking? Is he looking pretty relaxed or pretty? Uh, yeah, he seems to be pretty relaxed. Twinge in his eye. Uh, okay. Kind of like a mid mid morning, late late morning meal. Um, seems to just be having a drink, relaxed a little bit. You can see that he's got a couple of scars on the side of his face. Uh, looks like some very long, uh, like blade scars of some kind. Um, they cool. kind of form like a cross hatch pattern on one side of his cheek. But other than that, he's just got the long single braid. He's just relaxing at the table and just kind of be, appears to be looking around the room, smiling at a couple of different people and nodding at a few of them. Has a couple of light conversations uh, with a few people who happen by and sit at his table for a bit. Cool. Uh, I will grab an extra extra flag and a mead and pull up to his table. All right. He hey, uh, this seat up. taken? Please have a seat. Don't mind if I do. The uh, barkeep over there says you've been down into Undermountain a lot. I've had some shared experiences down there. Yeah? You got any, uh, you got any good stories? <laughs> what kind of stories are you looking for, friend? <laughs> Well, my uh, some associates that I know are, are looking to make a day trip out of it, and I want to make sure they don't get themselves killed. And you just kind of... A day trip to Undermountain, you say? Mm. Hmm. Your friends like you? I mean, not quite as charming, but they get the job done, right? <laughs> Bravado. I like it. I take it one of those is for me. Damn right. And he reaches over and grabs the flag and a mead and just kind of... So, are you looking for a tour guide? Or are you looking for someone to keep you safe? Well, I wouldn't mind a tour guide. I think uh, the party's pretty strong. They can probably handle their own, but they are uh, probably out of their depth. They don't know quite what they're getting into here. That's fair. Two guard rates and a bit cheaper. Um, how many in your pit party? 
Hope's coming with us, right? No? Yes? No? Do we know? Uh, yeah, no? I don't think. Okay, cool. We'll see if we end up spending like a year down there. <laughs> yeah, we might well. Uh, we fall into the next campaign. Yeah. Real time or game time. Uh, there's five of us. Party of five? Eh, we'll do it for 20 gold. 20 gold, huh? Seems pretty reasonable. What? Uh, how many times have you been down there, Jared? Eh. Two, three dozen. Kind of start to lose count after a while. Mm, fair Pretty enough. Pretty interesting fair place. Enough. Lots more to do than there is on the surface. I'll give it that. <laughs> I'll leave you there. What's uh, what's your uh, mercenary rate, Jared? Mercenary range a bit higher. Uh, typically, I do yeah you know, five gold, four gold a person, depending on how many for the uh, tour guide route. Mercenary guide tends to go up a little bit if you can't protect yourselves. Usually in the 10, 15 gold range. All right. Uh, you know, I think I think we'll handle ourselves with a tour guide if you'd be uh, if you happen to have a day. That's fine. I'd be happy to take a step back if you guys get into any altercations that you feel should be resolved in a more violent manner. Of course, of course, we wouldn't want to wouldn't want to get you in too much trouble down there, huh? <laughs> Easy for me to slip away since I know where I'm going. Exactly. Uh, you wouldn't happen to have a map at all, would you? Mm, maps don't really exist. One of the things about Undermountain, clearly you're not well uh, attuned with, and he just kind of straightens himself up in his chair a little. Undermountain don't stay the same. It's always a little different every time you go down. One of the nice things about having so many big folk down there, they tend to break walls down and make new ones wherever they see fit. New places be popping up. Old places people don't like anymore be getting torn down. Ah, a little like a, like a roguelike, I see. Like uh, Mines of Moria back in the 1990s. Not the point. Anyway, disassociated <laughs> for a second. I thought about muscle cars. So, uh, I think... I think Family. Uh, <laughs> thank you. I think that's, uh, that's a fair rate. Uh, how, how about we do half now, half when we get back, huh? Always seems to be some kind of a gimmick with people like this. Yeah, fine. Half now, half when we get back. Ten gold up front. Done. Alright, so he takes the ten gold from you. So, uh, I take it you're not with all your friends right now, waiting for them to show up? They should be on their way here anytime. And we hey. walk in right through, right <laughs> to the door as you say this. I bet. <laughs> kind of hey. bump into people, hey everyone. <laughs> Jared, do you, uh, I'm gonna lean in a little closer. Do you happen to know of anyone with any, uh, particular, say, magical skills down there. Magical skills down there. Mm. Depends on what kind of magics you're looking for. You're looking for things that blow stuff up, things that fix things, or things that let you find out about other things. Leaning more towards that last one there. Mm. A bit more rare down there, I'll admit that. That's one of the downsides of living under the mountain. Don't exactly get a lot of scholarly type living down there. Usually just the ones that people hire for certain jobs. Mm. Uh, me personally, there's a fellow I know down there, if he's still alive. Haven't been down in the last couple of months. Could have bit the bullet, as it were. Mm. Bit the sword, I guess. But, uh, well, I'll see if we can find him for you. It'd just be a bit of a fee to get you in touch with one of my contacts. Of course, of course. Alright, so tack on another five for that. We'd be looking at 25, and that is up front. I ain't telling you where this man lives and expecting payment afterwards. <laughs> I'll slide six across the table and say, for your health. Appreciate it. Alright, well, just saw a friend of mine over at that table. I'm going to go finish this drink with her. And uh, how long do you think we got? You got uh, uh, th four, 40 minutes? I think so. Right. I'll see you in 40 minutes. And he just kind of saunters over um, and sees another half-elf sitting at the table, and the two of them seems to control on pretty well, and he flips the extra gold piece off to the bartender and seems to disappear behind one of the uh, one of the archways and comes back about 40 minutes later looking a little disheveled, but rather smiley. Classic <laughs> half-elf. Yeah. Um, so That's my man. The two of you end up sitting down. You're down for maybe, we'll say, five or six minutes or so, uh, and then the party ends up making their way inside. Perfect. Uh, so yeah, walking in, just sort of scanning, looking around for the doctor. Um, and the interesting part here is that all five of you 
do not fit the aesthetic of this area. With the exception of Allura and Aleith. Um, mm. Leaf and Less, you guys just stick out like sore thumbs. Allura, you blend in pretty well. Aleith, you look like you were born here. Um, all of these people match your aesthetic. There are a few drow sitting at a couple of the different tables. And you see they all kind of take note and all of them kind of look at the new people entering into the room. And they kind of like doff their hoods a little bit. So you see how uh, you get the skin contact uh, or the skin uh, appearance. And then you just kind of get a little nod from underneath the hood. And then the hoods are uh, redrawn again. So seemingly at least acknowledging that you're there. Although not to the point of coming up and talking to you. Any of the drow who like may I make eye contact, I just give them like the chin nod back, like. They all just kind of share that same nod, and you get a couple of glints of white as a couple of them smile from underneath their hoods. I do the same thing, following suit. <laughs> so you look, you look around the room and you desperately try and find a triton inside the room, and closest thing that you find is there's a, a lighter skin, kind of not blue, but like, um, kind of like off gray tiefling, um, and. You just kind of catch eyes, and the tiefling just kind of looks back at you and just... And, like, flashes a fang, and then goes back to his drink. Nice. Leaf, looks, you, around, Leaf looks around and sees a mirror and goes, Oh, stop. <laughs> 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 in here. The mirror just behind the bar, you're just looking at all the alcohol bottles, and you look yeah. through one of them, and you see a distorted image of a furbolg, and you turn around really excited, and nobody's there, and then you look back and realize it's just you. Oh, uh, another day. Uh, where's the doctor? <laughs> and you see the I doctor assume I would have noticed the them come in. Yeah, they're, they're a bit of a presence when Leaf steps into Boy, a room, especially. Oops. I'm going to motion them over to the table. And uh, Jared just kind dude. of like leans over to you and goes, You didn't tell me these were your friends. I assume they'd all be like you. Yeah, they're, uh, they're, uh, they're a they're special bunch. Big. I hope they can be a little quiet. Hey, Doc, how's it going? Uh, hello, Leaf. Friends, this is this is Jared. Jared here's uh, agreed to be a little bit of a tour guide for us in the Undermountain. That's yeah, nice. We can be quieter than this. We have some help, if needed. Uh, I would su- make a suggestion, since none of you seem to be dressed for it. Uh, do you have any darker cloaks? Maybe a chance to hide some of that gleaming armor that you're wearing? Um... Yes, I, I look like, at I my guess cloak I... that is clearly black. Yeah. Oh no, he's not looking at you. He's looking yeah. specifically oh, okay. at less at less and leaf. <laughs> yeah, I probably have my like traveling uh, cloak. Yeah, you've got the big one that you commissioned when yeah. you were in. Uh, yes, I do. Yeah, in uh, cool. Velaki. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Unless yeah, I'm all good, I'll kind of drape it over. This I could always just close my my captain's jacket if that makes things easier. It is a dark navy jacket after all. And he just kind of looks at you and goes, "Yeah, it might be for the best, mate." It's a lot of shirtless people in Waterdeep just trying to fit in. <laughs> all right, so you guys kind of prep a little bit, get everything all set up, uh, and these. All right, half payment up front, and he takes uh, ten gold pieces from you. Yep. Cool. All right, follow me. Make sure you pay your own way. Hey, Bubba. And he ends up walking back, and there's kind of a, a larger half orc that's blocking the door now, with just with like a spear in front of him, and he just kind of, and he just kind of looks at him and just goes, "It's me plus five, mate." And he just kind of, mm, two gold each. <laughs> <laughs> I pull out two gold for my jingly fanny pack. Here you go. <laughs> and he just holds a, a fairly meaty hand out in front of you and waits for the coins to be dri- dropped in, and then Place Jared them in just one at a time. Jared just kind of looks expectantly and goes, I mean, you're paying my way, right? I'm not doing this for me. I'll pay his way. The doctor just paid for his Right. All right. Um, So he waits for the dozen gold pieces to be dropped into his hefty mitt and closes his hand and kind of tucks away the coinage. And eventually, all right, in you get. Pushes the door open and eventually uh, leads into a fairly large smooth stone room with a very prominent feature that's kind of a, a, a sunk level below you have to step down a couple of steps to get to which is just a very odd stone well but it's massive it's like almost 15 feet across and you see hooked up in a series of pulleys and chains to the ceiling is a single very rickety wooden chair and it's just attached via these chains to the ceiling 
and he just kind of uh, leans over. You can see that he goes up behind the door, locks the door behind him. Also, six of you with uh, with Bubba inside the room now, and he makes his way over and starts undoing a pulley. And the chair begins to descend a little bit from the roof and gets to the point where it's just a little bit beside the well. And then Jared goes over and grabs the chair and right, who's first? I'll go first. Oh, ladies up can first. Be safe. Can you get? And he kind of gestures for you to step up and hop into the chair. And it's it's big for you, right? It's it's designed to allow entities that are fairly hefty to be able to make their way down. And so you easily just kind of sit cross-legged in the center of the chair. And they just swing it over the center, and it kind of sways a little bit over the center of the well. I'm going to, like, fully lounge in this chair. Like, like... Do you want to do, like, the legs up over the like backrest? <laughs> yeah. No, not over the... No, not, like... And no, just like be yeah. looking straight down as the as the chair is descending. No. <laughs> I want to so, like, when I go down. Like, oh yeah, no. Over, like think um think the first time in True Blood that we see Eric. Okay, I gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So Allura starts to lounge in the chair, which is massive. So like for you, it, your legs are kind of splayed at odd angles, but <laughs> you, you make it work in a way. Some would really some would cool. find it sexy. That's, that's all she cares about. She looks really cool. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so you find a way to make it cool. And so Bubba just kind of... <laughs> and he goes over and you can see he just grabs this massive uh, pulley and a very large wooden handle attached to an iron spike. And just starts rotating it around a very, very large gear. Uh, and it starts to ratchet down and the chair starts to sink a little bit at a time. Uh, and he's just... Three minutes round trip. <clears throat> and starts going all the way down. And you start to descend and it is just a tube shaft heading down. Okay. Um, right, it is stone on both sides. Go ahead. As soon as I see something, I'm going to send a message and describe what I'm seeing to Elise so that uh, the group upstairs know what they're coming into. Okay, what's the range on message? You have to see them. No, and you have to see no, them. I think I have to see them. Ignore <laughs> I know you have to see them, but it also depends on what the range is. Yeah, I... I uh, 60 feet. Um, 120 feet. 120 feet. And you do need to be able to see them. It doesn't say that on my card. Let me double check. But this could be incorrect. Message Friday. Point your finger towards a creature within range and whisper. Yeah, no, you do not need to see them. Okay, yeah, so as long as they're within 120 feet. Okay, um, so you start to descend, and you've got, uh, for the size of the chair, it's roughly about five and a half feet across. Like, it's pretty hefty, but you very much sit in the center of the well, and it's kind of swaying a little bit back and forth, and the deeper you go down, the less it swings. So you're kind of very much going down just at uh, the center of it. Um, you know, you kind of reach out on both sides, and you, you can barely scrape your fingers against the edge of the well if you really try, but it feels a bit rickety, and you kind of decide it's probably better to stay centered. Um, and you descend for a minute, a minute and a half of just this constant ratcheting, clanking as the chain is going down. Um, and as you're starting to get to the bottom, you do see that there is a bit, a little bit of light that starts to come into view. Very, very faint flickering firelight. Um, and you kind of reach up and point up. Uh, and that's about all you see before you get out of range. Uh, so as you're kind of consistently sending messages because it's a cantrip you can just keep doing it um, yeah. once you eventually do get out of range you're able to see a little bit more uh, but it's not anything that you're able to send back up top okay all right so kind of making your way down and eventually you're kind of in the last 10 feet you, you realize you've been traveling down for probably 140 150 feet uh just straight down into this well and eventually come out into a fairly large open circular chamber and you're kind of at one edge of one of the circles uh, and the circular chamber has got a series of torches lit on all the different sides and a single door that is ajar and looks pretty heavily cracked on the other side. That's it? Just That's a it. room with Just door? an empty room with a door and a whole bunch of torches. Okay, I guess I just kind of move off to the side. Was I instructed on what to do when I got to the bottom? No. <laughs> okay. Um... Yeah, I get off and I kind of like maybe like use the butt side of my rapier and like jiggle the the rope or the chain or whatever that's holding the yeah just chair. Clang, clang the chain a little bit and kind yeah. of send a shockwave up yeah yeah and so, yeah. then just ready 
ready kind of a um, defense, just in case anybody... Sure. Adopt a <laughs> defensive stance. Yes, please. Okay. All right. So you're down there solo. Uh, and you kind of rattle the chain. Because I can hide, right? No. It's an open circular room. Nothing in the room. Just a smooth stone floor and kind of dirt and stone walls. You can hide behind the torch. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, that's what right. do. So you kind of jangle the chain a little bit, and the the chair has at this point kind of like toppled over on the bottom. Um, like clearly, it's just going down until the guy up top, top doesn't feel any resistance anymore. Um, and then once he sees the chain goes a little bit slack, he starts to just pull it up again. And 10, 15 seconds goes by, and then you start to hear the as the chain starts to go up, and the chair lifts off the ground and it heads up top. Um, and it's three minutes before anybody else makes their way down to you. Uh, who would you want to be the second person going down? Um, I can go. Okay. I can see if there's anything out there. Yeah. Like dark. All right. So Leith, you kind of peek your head over the edge and look down and you can see the light at the bottom without any real issue. You hop onto the chair and you get and the chain starts to descend and you get to go down a little bit. Laura told me to the rest of the party before I go though. Sure. Easy enough to do. Um, and Allure, you would start hearing the chain coming down again, so you can kind of describe everything to a leaf. You can yell it up to the top. Um, so we'll say that you all kind of get an idea of what you're looking at once you come down to the bottom. Just a single large open stone room, and then a kind of cracked door on the far side. Cool. All right. Mm. Question. Answer. Can I expend a, um, a wand thing to see if there's any secret passageways in this room? Sure. Go ahead and uh, do that. So you expend one of the wand charges? Mm-hmm. Okay. Wand secrets. Um, I just don't want anyone to burst through a door I don't see. Yeah, sounds good. I got the cool fade man blowing out a wall behind you. Oh, here we go. Can I get a wand of healing? Yeah. 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 So you don't actually roll anything. You just literally, you just use the charge and it tells you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so there do not appear to be any secret doors. Uh, but the door does appear to be trapped. Oh, perfect. Okay, thank right. you. So yeah, so you would kind of wait for a leaf, and a leaf you eventually reach the bottom. The door clacks, or the uh, chair clacks to the ground. You hop off, rattle the chain, and goes up. And over the next fifteen minutes, the remainder of the party starts to descend their way down, and eventually all six of you find yourselves at the bottom of the massive well and the chair being brought up. Uh, and one of the things that you notice while you're down there as well as you're kind of looking around the room waiting for everybody to show up um, is there is a very large lever input into behind where the chair lands at the very bottom of the well. Uh, and the lever just says, uh, uh, pull for help. <laughs> Okay. I make explicit note of Bubba in case I need to cast sending to him. <laughs> All right. So he's a fairly large half orc. Um, you know, very like oddly cropped hair on both sides. Uh, a nice. couple of piercings in the lips. Large underbite uh, teeth, and kind Man, of I your like classic Bubba. definition of orc with a couple of extra piercings and tattoos. He seems cool. I like I him. Like, I like Bubba. I love. I like Bubba too. <laughs> All right. Um, so eventually, uh, Jared makes his way down, and right, everybody here, nice and safe. So we are heading on then, are we? Lead the way. Yep. Perfect. Uh, follow me. And he just kind of gingerly hops across the floor, and then just step number one through the first door. And he kind of leans over, and like instead of pressing on the door, he just goes a little bit over to the right-hand side and grabs one of the bricks that's set into the wall and just pulls the brick out of the wall. And then in behind that uh, is a very small metal spike. Um, the spike that he pulls out levers into a very tiny gap to the other side of the door, and he pulls the door open without actually touching it with his hand. Replaces, Classic Replaces okay, the iron so. spike, replaces the, the piece of stone into the wall, and the door cracked now lies open in front of you, and he kind of steps I, through. I would really like to have kind of like been watching carefully what he did in case we have to get here again without him. Yeah, easily enough to do. You just notice that directly beside where the handle is, is that one loose stone. You probably could have found it given enough time, but without knowing that it was trapped, it was a pretty obvious thing. You just open the door. Like, it's not hard to do. But whatever it is, he did seem to be very ginger with that spike, making sure that he didn't touch the door in any way. I'm gonna turn to the doctor. This guy's good. You've did a really, that was a good call. He seems like he knows his stuff. Alright. 
So he pulls the door open uh, ahead of you guys and starts to make his way into Undermountain. And I think here is where we're going to go ahead and just take a quick five minute break. Um, into the Undermountain. Yeah, so quickly, while we're on a break, give me one sec. Wee! That hurt. Ow. Ow. I stubbed my toe. It's okay. Uh, we've got one of these awesome dice trays uh, to give away to somebody in the chat. Uh, and uh, for this one, we usually do a keyword giveaway. A uh, couple of things here of note. First one, of course, is uh, that this is a keyword giveaway. If you enter the keyword more than once, you will be disqualified. So make sure you only key it in one time. Uh, second thing for these is that we do just ship regular mail. So it usually takes about a week or so to show up. And the last one, if you've won anything within the last 30 days, sorry, you're excluded from the giveaway for this one. Um, you <laughs> can enter, but uh, unfortunately, you know, we want to make sure that we're giving out enough of these to the community. So we want to get them distributed to different people um, so if you do win we'll end up just picking somebody else uh, even if you've keyed it in in the chat so the keyword for today let me just quickly go ahead and make sure that dude got it's gotta it. be bubba it up. Yeah. <laughs> i was originally gonna have it be under mountain but <laughs> we'll, we'll see runaway npc of the session <laughs> we actually how much should we pay bubba to, <laughs> and become with us <laughs> Um, Bubba, be our guide, be our bodyguard. Bubba Booey. <laughs> uh, all right, so yeah, so for the giveaway, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and just make it. We'll make it nice and easy. It'll be Bubba. B U B B A. So type that in the chat one time. Uh, make sure that you only key it in once, like I said, otherwise you will be disqualified. Uh, and this is open to everybody as long as you haven't won within the last 30 days. Um, and we'll be seeing you guys back here in just a couple minutes. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll see you guys back here soon, and uh, probably give it five, maybe ten minutes until we come back. Sick. Bye.
And we are back. Hello, everybody. Thanks for sticking with us through our brief little break. Um, we'll go ahead and run our giveaway right now. Uh, and the winner of the giveaway will be decided. I want to make sure I've got everything set correctly. There we go. All right, here we go. And the winner of the giveaway is... Uh, automatically more users ineligible. There be me. Boom. <laughs> nice. It wasn't me. Of course it, was it wasn't me. Uh, no, there we go. Clockwork underscore taco. Congratulations, Clockwork. I didn't un- even enter it though. You didn't? It said you no, were I didn't eligible see somehow. Bella. Oh, weird. Nice. It said you were eligible somehow. Well, whatever. Apparently, Nightbot is just weird. But uh, yeah. the actual winner is Clockwork underscore taco. I have the uh, thing right here. Uh, for some reason, Nightbot, right. of course, is not going to say it in the chat, but it doesn't matter. Uh, so, congrats, Clockwork underscore taco. Uh, we've got one of these awesome little dice trays that are 3D printed. Uh, you've got slots for nine dice, you've got all your spell trackers, a little rolling area, and then a slot for a pen or pencil. So we'll get your info after the stream. Uh, get that shipped out to you probably, like we said, about a week, week and a half, depending on uh, shipping times. And we will go from there. So, alrighty, jumping right back in. Back into Undermountain. Back into Undermountain. So. As all six of you have descended, uh, Jared has managed to open the door, the first trap leading into the more expansive area underneath the city. Uh, You begin to make your way through, and eventually he uh, goes up behind and pulls uh, one of the stones from the other side, and it's actually got a grooved place on the back of it, and he pulls the door closed behind him and then replaces the stone. Uh, So kind of a way both to open and close the door. Uh, And you see that this one, uh, going through this door, it opens into just a fairly small hallway. Um, it's lit by ever-present torches on I- on either side. Nothing uh, really set in sconces or anything, just kind of these glowing little orbs. Uh, and they're roughly spaced about 40, 50 feet apart or so. And you start to just kind of make your way down a fairly long, curving hallway. It kind of curves and descends a little bit further off to the right, and um, eventually opens up into a much larger open chamber. Um, and you see that once you're in this chamber, there does appear to be quite a few people that are bustling around. You've got uh, a few half-orcs, quite a few drow, some half-elves, some very battle-scarred humans. Everybody looking fairly on the burly side, except for a couple of kind of smaller uh, individuals that are running around, looks to maybe halflings or some gnomes. Every once in a while, you catch sight of a child, weirdly. Usually sticking pretty close. There's definitely somebody who seems to be the protector of some kind of whoever the child is. Um, But you do eventually see that there are a couple passing through. And they seem to be running between different buildings, different doors, and there's multiple passageways that are leading off in different directions. Um, And then Jared just kind of turns to you guys and says, right, so uh, you want a brief little layout of what you're looking at right here? I believe so, Jared, please. Right. All right. Uh, so one of the major things about the Under Mountain, and he kind of like gets his presenter voice on, <laughs> is uh, it's an area that tends to be home to a lot of things that you don't find on the surface. Um, looking at things like uh, a lot of temples to some of the deities that others find uh, a bit perverse. Uh, looking at things like mm. Bane, Baal, Sirik, Oril, Loth. A lot of different temples to those are down here, obviously in the darker recesses of the uh, of the other mountain. Mm. The land, as he says, uh, there's a temple to Loth down here. Main open area right here. Uh, you got a temple to Bale right over there. Uh, you've got uh, a nice little shop. Anybody who wants to come in and buy anything that they might need to traverse the under mountain. Uh, one of the big highlights here, uh, just out of curiosity, do you all know anything about the under mountain? Do you know any of the levels or anything, kind of, what the big draw of the city is for those who are not here under exile? First time here. First time. It's, uh... well, less re- regulations, and there's ten levels. Um, All right, so you do know about the... the levels. Yeah. Okay. So the levels are one of the interesting ones. Supposedly there are actually more than ten levels. And uh, it's something that a few people end up coming down here by their own choice. Try and dig it a little bit deeper and find out if there is anything that exists a bit further down. Mm -hmm. Um, But for the time being, we're going to go ahead and stick to the first level. Just because this tends to be where I spend most of my time. My bread and butter, as it were. How far down have you gone? Me personally, I've never made it past level one. I don't see the point. I'm able to do the things I want to down here, have a little bit of fun where I need to, and then I call it there. That's fair. Guide to Undermountain. Happy to help. So, 
in this open area here, you've got a very basic little shop over there. Uh, of course, you've got your Temple to Bale, as I said. Um, and just kind of general milling about people coming back here to ensure that they're not attacked in the middle of the street. Although it does still happen. And he kind of gestures down the floor, and you do see that there are a couple of very large carved cracks in the stone. Um, and he's just... It's not the most common thing in the world, but people do tend to get attacked anywhere that is an open space, should a debate get a little bit more heated. So... We'll continue on. And he ends up just kind of continuing further on with you guys. And he leads you past a series of different temples. Um, you see that there are temples to Bane, to Oril, uh, and eventually onto the Temple of Lulth that he points out. Um, and Elith, you kind of recognize this. He's been walking for a good maybe 10, 10 minutes or so down a couple of different side streets. And you see the familiar um, spider sigil on uh, the front door. All the temple doors are closed. One of the things as well that you're noticing is all the buildings is the vast majority of them seem to be kind of carved into the stone itself. A few of them are freestanding wooden structures, um, but almost none of them have windows of any kind. They very much appear to be that there is a door, you go into the door and you're able to see what's on the other side. This isn't an area where you can kind of peek in a window and look and see what's on the side. A um, couple of minor scuffles end up breaking out. One is a little bit on the bigger side, and you see that there's a, a fairly large uh, human that ends up kind of getting into a bit of a confrontation with another half-elf, uh, and they seem to be arguing over payment for some work that was done. Um, swords don't get drawn. Neither of them seem to have weapons, but they kind of take their shirts off and just start going at each other in the center of the street. And quite yeah. a few people end up coming out from some of the buildings on either side, and a bit of a crowd forms cheering them on. Definitely not something that you would expect, and no guards of any kind show up until eventually the half-elf lies, uh, t takes a heavy blow on the side of the cheek and then falls to the ground and blood spatters across the ground and the human just kind of turns and, <laughs> and then grabs the coin purse off of the half-elf and just slinks away. Can, when this I can happening, do that. Can I, um, watching the edge of the crowd to see if there's anything, anyone taking advantage of the distraction? Sure, make a perception check. We're actually the ones getting robbed right now. We're like, oh. Twelve. <laughs> Twelve? Uh, Looking around, everybody seems to be pretty focused on it. Right? There's a couple of guys brawling in the street, fisticuffs. Um, you see that there are a couple of people, both uh, guys and girls, that are coming out and kind of like ooing and aahing at the shape that they're in. Um, mm. You know, kind of being a little bit sad that the half elf's probably going to have a bloodied face after all this. Uh, but nobody mm. comes to assist. He just kind of is laying in the street, bloodied, and eventually, you know, 30 seconds later or so, kind of blinks a bit and then comes to his senses and like jerks awake. And just kind of sits up and looks around for his coin purse and realizes it's gone and just, oh, fuck, and starts looking around a little bit and gets up and just kind of goes on his way. Hmm. Jared, you said there was uh, there was a regular shop around here. Are there any shops that deal in more uh, obscure items, magic items, maybe? Not on this level. That's one thing mm. I'll tell you right up front. Um. One of the things about the upper level here is just because of the sheer amount of traffic that comes down here, it's not exactly a place that magical items would be well defended. There might mm. be an individual or two who are privately selling an item, but definitely mm. nothing that advertises, hey, we've got magic shit in here. Of course. Yeah. But uh, you want to see my contact, right? Yes. Perfect. All right, we'll go ahead and make our way further down there. And sorry, remind me, what was it that you wanted the contact for? Uh, it was a... We were looking for a magic user. Mm -hmm. And I believe the specification was someone who could, like... With, like, far-seeing or, like, like sight anyway. Or at least, like, someone powerful enough that could conceivably do what we need them to do. Fair enough. Okay. Um, so he kind of leads you down, and you pass by a couple of other different places. Um, you notice that there's a couple of kind of odd-looking places. Um, I'm going to get a leaf and leaf. Actually, no, you know what? Just a leaf. Go ahead and make a perception check for me. Because you're kind of, you've got the dark vision to be able to see a little bit further than most. Yeah, I was gonna say if it's any, if it's yeah. like dimly lit. <laughs> no, it, it's all like I it's have a dark permanent. vision. I have dark vision as well, Jordy. So yours is only sixty feet, though, right? Oh yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah no, at least is one hundred and fifty feet. So it's actually one eighty. At least got like radar. Even yeah. more. All right, so one eighty. 
a leaf echo locates. Yeah. A leaf is so sexy. <laughs> so <laughs> badass. 28. 28. Um, okay. So you are kind of noticing that there are a couple of individuals, quite a few, um, wearing different lengths of different robes and different cloaks. Um, and you notice that there seems to be one that looks kind of similar in the make and coloring to the cloak that you um, might have found. It might not be an identical match, but at least among this, a black cloak of the length that it would have had to be for that to get snagged, there is one person who might actually fit that. Um, and you see them just very rapidly turn a corner, um, not seem to be running by any stretch of the imagination, but like you just kind of catch it at the glimpse of your eye that it might be some kind of a match. Okay, I run after them, and as I'm, like, I don't stop, but as I'm running, I touch Whisper, and I send to Allura, just just saw someone who had a cloak, like, the fabric, I'm going after him. Okay. Do you need a And, like, you know, come if you want, or bring the others. Okay. Uh, I'm not trying to go on my own, but I also don't want to lose this person, so I'm kind of like... Yep. Yeah, there, it's a good about 120 feet, 130 feet away from you. So it's it's a thing you gotta really book it to get there, but you can get there. As surreptitiously mm. as I can, as well. Like I'd be sticking to kind of shadows and corners and not like, you know, doing the full tilt, left, tilt like tourists running down the street to catch a bus. Like that's what I'm trying to avoid. Yeah, no, you're you're doing the the sneaky I, run. I send message to Alura or Alith. Um, mm -hmm. I've got your back. Get get him. Forget yeah. that. So I'm gonna follow Elite and make sure that nobody is like tracking her. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, so yeah, so kind of looking oh, behind, no. Allura, go and make a perception check for me. Wait, sorry, so both Allura and Elise just dipped off the party? Yeah. So Elise just kind of booked it. Um, Elise, what's your passive stealth? So just uh, <laughs> 10 plus your stealth mod. 10 plus my stealth mod, yeah. 19. 19, does anybody have a passive perception higher than 19? Yeah, I'm pretty uh, sure my passive. Oh, sorry, my passive insight is twenty, but not my perception. What's it plus passive again, Jordan? Uh, for you, uh, it's it's uh, ten plus your perception modifier. Okay, so no, seventeen. Um, yeah, and so yeah, so for you guys, none of you notice. At least, just all of a sudden, just dips out from the back of the Ooh. pack and messages Allura. Um, Allura, what's your passive stealth? I think it's like twenty-two. Or Passive stealth? Yeah, it's it's uh, ten There's plus your stealth mod. Oh, uh, my passive stealth is twenty-two. Yeah, so uh, Elith dips, lets Allura know, and then Allura dips, and suddenly it's the three <laughs> guys walking with Jared, and none of you know what happened. You like, you don't even look and see them. You just don't even realize they're gone. You just kind of keep okay. walking and looking yeah, around a little bit. Oh, cool. So we're still just having a fun tour. Yeah. yeah. Um, Man, this place is so cool. But Elith, as quick as you can, you kind of rapidly make your way down, uh, following the <coughs> uh, the, f the fleeting glimpse of what might have been a cloak that you caught, and you kind of ca turn one of the corners and you look down. Go make a perception check for me. That one's not so good. That's going to be a 12. That's a 12, okay. Um, so kind of looking in, you're trying to figure out exactly what happened. And you just see at the end of this, you see a massive pile of rubble. You see that there's a couple of buildings on either side, but all the doors are closed. You're kind of stopping and pausing for a second and listening. It doesn't seem to be anything pinging. There's three doors, two on the right, one on the left, and then that just giant pile of rubble at the end. But otherwise, it appears to just be a blocked off uh, section. It doesn't seem like there's anywhere that anybody could have gone. So is there any hidden doors or any hidden entrances in this area? That perception check doesn't give yeah, you enough to find me. anything. Okay. No. Would you I just see up? the three main doors. Yeah, at this point you would be able to catch up as well because you've and got um, quick move speed too. I would have to notice, did I notice anyone kind of watching Elise as I was What was the her? perception check you rolled? I didn't roll a perception check. Oh, sorry. Roll a perception check for me then. Uh, it's 12 again. 12? You're kind of looking around. Nobody seems to be paying you any attention. I mean, people are kind of running to and fro. Um, there's a lot of people moving at a slower pace. You know, you don't really draw any attention. You, you two are definitely not the type that would draw additional attention, right? It's not like Leaf running in full clad armor down the center <laughs> of the street. It's okay, um, we, uh, you, you guys ditched us. We get, ah! we get it. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, you following up, you do eventually catch up with Aleth, and Aleth, you're just kind of like looking, trying to figure out if anything uh, could happen in any of these three doors. You're not entirely um, sure. Allura, can you use the Wand of Secrets? I don't know where the cape went, the cloak. Lost him. Okay. I used the Wand of Secrets. All right, uh, go ahead. Um, what is the range on the Wand of Secrets? Um, if a secret trap door or trap with it is within 30 feet of you. Okay. So you pull out the Wand of Secrets, and uh, only one of the doors is currently within 30 feet of you. It's the one that's closest to you, kind of on your right. Um, and you kind of instinctively move the wand forward. Doesn't appear to be anything pinging on the wand so far. You've got the two other doors as well. Can I walk towards those two? Yeah. Uh, how long does it last for? Or is it just a one-time use? Uh, once the nearest trap or secret door has been found, the wand stops pulsing and another charge must be expended. Okay, so it just kind of keeps going. Good to know. Okay, so you kind of... Yeah, the wand pulses and guides you to the nearest one. Let me just read. Wand of Secrets. I just want to make sure that I've got it correct. While holding, you can use an action to expend if a secret... No, if a secret trap or door is within 30 feet of you, the wand pulses and points at the one nearest to you. Hang on. I'm just trying to make sure that I've got the right wording on it. D&D Beyond. So yeah, the wand has three charges. While holding, use an action to expend one. And if a secret door or trap is within 30 feet, pulses and points at the one nearest to you. So yeah, so it, okay. it's not well, a continuous I effect. I would have waited to, knowing that, I would have expended the, it with trying to keep, get as many of the doors in the 30 feet. Like okay. I would have Yeah, you would have Yeah, you would have gone to the optimal point. Where you could have yeah. the most. Okay. So you kind of stand in the center of the of the street. You kind of roughly gauge everything. It's probably 20 to 25 feet away from each of the doors. And you light the wand. And nothing pings. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, if I turn the corner, I was following... To, was I How caught up was I to the cloak person before? So they I were left? about 130 feet away from you, like pretty close to the edge of your vision um, when they turned that corner. So for you to run that distance, they could have easily made it another 60 or 70 feet uh, before you were able to catch up. And I guess with my precision check that sucks, we can't tell if there's anything past that rubble from here. No. Um, all right. I think I kind of lost it, but um, should we try and go in the doors or see if there's anything past this rubble? It could have been any of them. I think we need to get back to the group. Um, if I understand the Undermountain well enough, and I think at this point, I, I get it. If we separate from our friends in a significant way, we will not find them again. Um, I think that we just need to now know that there might be people down here with that cloak and keep our eyes peeled for them. All right. I know as much as I want to open these doors. No, I hear you. You're right. And I mean, they they might need our help. And I mean, at least they have that Jared Goy. And we might get, into, get in over our heads without them as well. Yeah, I think that's as much as I want to go banging down doors. I think uh, our best option is to not bring attention to ourselves early into coming into the, end, the under mountain okay so, and keep our okay, eyes then, um, oops For sorry the- i didn't smoke over you your audio was doing the thing i'm sorry that's okay no yeah i agree i agree with you we should share what's about us and make cautious cautious choices so um did you tell them that we'd meet them back there uh i told them <laughs> i yelled something i was like I did yell. No, I, I said no, you it didn't. in message. I don't think you, anything you messaged like, no. Nope. Message. We're, yeah, we've been uh, walking for like. <laughs> we've been hanging out, didn't notice yeah. you leave, and Jared yeah. yeah. just like, Where it's over here, you'll notice a nice, lovely, dilapidated statue of that. I feel like how no, many forks in the road have we taken? Time. I think everything I said to you was in message. Um, I don't know. I didn't even let them know I was. Oh, shit. <laughs> nope. You guys didn't let them yeah, know that you left, uh, that you broke off. Well, then we probably better get back quickly. Yeah. 
All right, so you guys kind of make your way back as best you can. Um, you judge the basic path that you think that they ended up going. Um, uh, go ahead and just roll a perception check, both of you, please. Fuck. <laughs> the gang gets separated. <laughs> 12. I rolled a 3. 13. 13. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> the two of you kind of trying to figure out what direction you think they went. You kind of follow down in the same direction that you thought they were walking, and you eventually come to a three-way split in the path, and you have no idea what direction they walked down. Can I... Uh, twitching. Send message to Leaf? Yeah, so you can attempt to message Leaf. Um, yeah. Go ahead and... Uh, so yeah, so you send the message off. Leaf, you do hear this, because you guys at this point, having taken one of the forks... You kind of go into a narrower hallway, and you realize that, oh, Allura and Aleth aren't here anymore. You kind of catch oh, on to no. the fact that they're not behind you anymore, and you immediately pause and re- realize, okay, they went off somewhere. Let's just wait here for a second, and you would eventually sure. get the message that pops into your head, because you do not need to see Leaf. You just need to be out within 120 feet. Yeah. All right, so yeah, so you would be able to fire a message off. Leaf, we, uh, we had to act fast <laughs> and uh, check something out. Trying to meet up with you again? Which direction on the fork? Is it a fork or is it a three fork? It's a, a tri fork. A tri fork. Uh, center, left, or right? Um, which would we? <laughs> you guys took the right fork. Okay, uh, took the right fork. All right. Okay. And so you kind of hearing that would assume walk back down a little ways and allure you'd catch up with the leaf pretty quick. Um, you'd find that it'd be about 90, 100 feet in front of you, kind of having followed that down and then opened up into another large expanse. And a, a leaf would have walked back down the hallway to meet up with you guys. So a little crisis cool. avoided there. That was uh, that was fun. Yeah. Did All you right. guys see a good deal? Was there like uh, we're, we were looking for stuff hey. to buy down here? Remember the one thing that we found at the circle that was not the slightly gorier thing? The finger? <laughs> the no. cloth. We found that we found I saw someone who had cloth that looked a lot like the cloth. That really? Oh, and yeah. I'll make sure that nobody level. is to us. Like there you yeah, go. no doors are ajar or no one's kinda like leaning in on listening. Yeah, I think I would probably translate this pretty quietly and kind of out of Jared's earshot. That's why I was was trying to sort of be like, keep it under wraps. But yeah, I found something that it was at the right, like the hem was close enough to where we found the other one that it looked like it could have been the same type of cloth. That's fair. Cloak. Um, Didn't really think, but I guess that makes sense that, you know, maybe there's some, did we figure these people are the cultists for, was that Gargoth? I mean, it could be that, or it could be also just like they share a fucking haberdasher. But either That's way, they do. Um, I'm mean, sorry. I just we just took off like that. I did. Yeah. It happens. Um, next yeah, time, is, that one of more us often than we care to it happen. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Actually, this is sort of a. But either way, I sent Allura a message, and then yeah, that I was my fault. To do anymore. It was well, my fault. Either way, uh, let's. Uh... I can be a little impulsive. I was sort of trying to hear something <laughs> that time, but I shouldn't offload that responsibility either. That's okay. I feel most people don't get into adventuring if there isn't some like uh, you know, uh, impulsivity sort of goes hand in hand with this uh, profession. So it's all good. Thank you. So, yeah. Um, what did you guys see? Uh. Yeah, I've seen anything. Lot. We saw some babies <laughs> walking around. We saw some fighting pits. Uh, you know, yeah. standard Undermountain stuff. Sounds cool. You've never been to the Undermountain, unless. Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, shall we keep going? Yes, let's. All right. Cool. Um, so, you end up my eyes out for the cloaks if I see anybody else who looks like they're wearing something like that. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I, I would, too. Yeah, so all, all of you kind of getting a, a feel for the fact that a ve- at least a very similar style of cloak, the same kind of material in the same kind of sizing pattern and the same length existed here. Um, you know, like you found out before, it could it could just be a coincidence. Some of you probably believe there are no such thing as coincidences. So you just kind yeah. of keep your eyes out as you're walking. 
actually knowing what uh, the hidden lord's uh, kind of sig or symbol is, mm -hmm. I might look for some of those. Like if I see anything like carved in anywhere. Sure. Find anything carved or see maybe like a a, a clasp of some kind that matches yeah, what that some, might be. Okay. Something in that range. Sure. Good to know. All right. I'll keep that in mind. Cool. All right. So you guys catching up with Jared again. Uh, he ends up continuing and just, right, we ready to go then? Unless anyone else wants to find a bathroom or anything, I think we're probably good to roll. Find a bathroom, right? All right. Follow me. And he ends up just kind of, again, leading down a fairly open set of uh, what looks like are probably small homesteads. A couple of them, you know, kind of haphazardly built out of wood and random pieces of stone. A couple of others have got, like, half a brick wall as the front entrance, and then it's just propped up by loose boulders on the other side. Definitely may just, just be functional and, like, on the verge of collapse, but not quite there. Hmm. Um, and you eventually find your way leading further down, and he steps up in front of a very unassuming home. Um, strangely enough, one of the few places you've seen that's got a little mailbox out front. Um, it's got just like a little small wooden box with a, just a wooden lid on it. Um, and he goes up to the door. And, right, you might want to back off a little bit for this one. And he uh, indicates for all of you to take a couple of steps back, and he just goes okay. up and... Like a very specific, unique knock. Um, and all of you are able to hear that, and you're all able to register that and remember it for the future. And then he kind of gestures for all of you to step forward a little bit further again. And the door opens, and you see on the other side, you see this very decrepit, um, surprisingly, because you never really get to see them this way, um, elven man. And he's just kind of like hunched over, shoulders really high, skin sagging a little bit. And you can see there's like some sallowing in the skin, a little bit of yellow on the side of his mouth, long bushy eyebrows that kind of extend almost off the side of his head a bit. And he's... What? You! Why have you bothered me again? Fantastic. <laughs> Jerry just kind of relax, Wilfred. I've brought uh, some friends who might be of interest to you this time. And just, ah, ooh, really, you br what? Ah, uh, oh, you're big. Any points of Leaf at the front of the party? Uh, hey, yeah. Oh, actually, I'm Leaf, but it's good to meet you, Wilfred. Ah, uh, how do you? How does he know my name? He just heard it. Oh. <laughs> You're funny looking. <laughs> come in, come in, come in. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. Dad, where's my payment? And he just got in full. It's fine, it's fine. And he reaches out and drops the ten gold pieces that the doctor gave him uh, up top into Wilfred's hands. And he just kind of. <laughs> come on, come on. And he I'm just. Sure yeah. Knowing how, like, to gauge, like, elven aging, can I sort of... Probably again? over 400 years old. It's been a rough 400, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would be, like, clear, but, you know, it's he got road hard and put away wet, so... <laughs> Um, but yeah, so he kind of gestures for all of you to step inside, and he's in a relatively well-built house. It looks to be mostly made out of stones, but they're all kind of assembled in a very geometrically pleasing uh, fashion. It forms a fairly nice, long, rectangular main room, a couple of doors off to the sides. Um, but what's interesting is as you step inside, the room itself looks a lot bigger than the house does from the outside class. One um, of these. And he kind of closes the door behind him and you see that there's a faint shimmering of purple and pink around the edge of the door as he closes the door. Uh, and he just kind of, right. Well, come on, sit, sit down, sit down. And he gestures to a whole bunch of different, like, multicolored different sizes and styles of furniture. Some of it padded, some of it just wood, like random long benches. There's just cushions on the floor. It really depends entirely on what you want to sit in. Lest there's even an empty tub that you could sit in if you wanted to. I'd be down with that. 
and he just kind of gestures for all of you to sit, and you can see Jared just kind of sinks into, like, a fairly small uh, lounging chair that looks like it would fit him pretty well, and just, ah, do you want any food or anything? And he kind of snaps his fingers, and three kind of spectral uh, figures start to step out from behind um, a door that looks like it would probably lead right into the side of the mountain based on the size of the house that you saw before but they kind of open the door and it leads up into a very expansive room and start bringing out uh, platters of different kinds of meat and vegetables and uh, different types of food different drinks as well and they all get set down on tables uh, within the area mm. uh, thank you very much for your hospitality Wilfred can I ascertain whether or not like all of the different chair choices mean anything like is he taking note of which chairs we pick um make an insight check how big is this tub jordy we're talking like stretching my feet and my legs out arms out like crumpled up um, you would be able to comfortably sit with your legs fully extended and then your back kind of up against the back. It's kind of like a, a longer clawfoot tub. Nice. Oh, I remember these days. Three. Yeah. Um, yeah, he, he doesn't really seem to be paying much attention. Um, I will say just one of the things that you would note is that the, the furniture pieces do appear to be of different styles of furniture from around different areas of Faerun. So it looks like they were maybe brought here um, and just kind of purposely brought in to, you know, have all these different styles together rather than going for a very, um, you know, feng shui mo motif where everything kind of matches or fits together really well. This is more just like random haphazard furniture, but there's no two pieces that match. They're all completely different. Impressive. Can I take a, as I'm laying down and getting comfortable in the tub, can I kind of take a quick look around this area as well and just look out, look, uh, looking for anything out of the ordinary? <laughs> yeah, um, everything <laughs> is out of the ordinary. More particular, like anything that might be dangerous to us, like anything that could, anything that would resemble something looking on us or, sure. uh, go you make know, a, make a reception check. remnants of anything dangerous, like dangerous spell books, or just like looking for anything that would be like harmful to us in any way. Sure, go and make a perception check. Okay, uh, that's a 15. 15, okay. Um, so there's a big uh, big fireplace uh, in the center of the room. No fire in it, just a couple of small smoldering coals and a big mantelpiece above the fireplace. And above the mantelpiece, you see a very stunning, broad-chested, shoulders out, kind of muscles at the ready, uh, elven man with eyes and, like, smiling. And he seems to be just looking down, surveying the scene. And then you kind of, like, move your head a little bit and the eyes seem to be tracking you a little it's kind of one of those paintings, but then you realize that it's not actually a painting that is tracking you. It's the eyes are actually moving inside, but they're only moving with you as long as you move with them. And then all of a sudden you realize that the eyes are just doing this. Like just looking from side to side with no real explanation of any kind. Um, Love it. There's a couple of random pieces. Like you see some random gnarled pieces of wood that kind of form what could be maybe candle holders on the on the mantelpiece again. But like some of them seem to be growing and shrinking at different rates. It seems to be like everything in the room is just a little weird. And it just kind of puts you like on edge a bit. Like clearly someone designed it this way for a reason. But it, you just don't like it. Hmm. We're uh we're looking to get to Sakamba, right? That's our that's why we're here. Teleport to Sakamba. Um, yes. Do we? Re I think that's what we're doing, right? Yeah. Well, we I think we were also just looking to see if there's anybody who we could kind of like call upon for teleportation on like a semi regular basis. Mm -hmm. for the future as well, like maybe forge a, like a bit of a bit of a connection, a bit of a contact. A quid mm -hmm. pro quo. Yeah. Especially like I don't know. This guy seems like maybe he could use some handy people to. Do <laughs> Bill, this might all be here as he wants it to be here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Wilfred, uh, Jared here told us that you're a uh, you're a man of exceptional magical ability. <laughs> you such a charmer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> can you uh, can you perhaps teleport? Teleport? It, it, it's a uh, a skill I haven't had to use in quite some time, but yes, I I can do it if the need should arise. 
<laughs> now, Wilfred, I'm asking because we're looking to get we're looking to get to Sacomber rather quickly. Perhaps you could uh, we could avail your services. Why? Sacomber is boring. Yes, but we have a friend there, and well, he's he's not feeling very well, and we want to get there before he should uh, uh, pass. We hope not. Uh, friends, yeah, never. Yeah. They always just seem to disappear. It's, it's a fleeting thing. I I wouldn't fret too much. Um, <laughs> I touch whisper and say to the doctor, like uh, telepathically, um. Maybe a talk to take. They probably possibly knew each other. I don't know if you want us there or not. Hey, Wilfred, you wouldn't happen to know the name uh, uh, Emilio Amanitas, would you? You see his eyes kind of narrow on you a little bit, and why? <laughs> well, we we encountered him. We were passing through Sacomba recently, and. Uh, he kept talking about how he was this incredible mage who had all of these powers and was so powerful. But you know, I thought he—I uh, thought he talked a big game. You know. <laughs> and you see him just like freak out and like take a pillow and just throw it against a wall, and the pillow, oh. when it impacts against the wall, just explodes in a small puff of flame, and all the singed um, feathers fly out across the room and land on the ground. And That's he cool. stole my cat. He stole your what? My cat, lavender. Yeah. He stole her. <laughs> Said he well, needed one to finish off his collection and stole her. This is the tea getting spilled. <laughs> you know, I thought something felt off about that. He had all of these cats and he didn't seem to care for them very much. He, he didn't care God, for them? That makes what? me so mad, Wilfred. That, you know... You know, he's in Sacomber. May he die there. I, kinda, I think uh, someone <laughs> might be ahead of you on that one, but... <laughs> well, you might not be too far off on that one. Well, hey, Question. you know, we... Sorry, go ahead. How would you like us to bring Lavender back for you? If we can find Lavender? If you send us to Sacomber, we could... Search for Lavender and bring her back. Them back. Make a persuasion check. Nice one, Amanda. That's a good idea. Here we go. But about to take a cat back. <laughs> it was a good idea. Until the dice rolled. That'll be a six. <laughs> and he just kind of... You. You would bring me back my cat. But you're so poultry. Well, it wouldn't just be her, Wilfred. It'd be all of us. Surely, mm. the uh, the group standing before you can handle such a task. Uh, I, uh, 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 uh. He just kind of starts babbling to himself a little bit, and you see him just kind of uh, one moment. Uh, uh. And you see him gets up from the chair and he kind of just like hobbles a little bit over uh, and ends up kind of flipping through a couple of different books that are on the side of the, um, the side of the mantelpiece. There's a fairly large bookshelf next to it. And he finds eventually one book and kind of opens it up and then like looks back at all of you and just... And like blows a whole bunch of dust <laughs> out of the book uh, into the center of the room. And the dust kind of clings to each of you. And as uh, as he does that, he just kind of murmurs He's, under his is, breath. Sorry. Is it glittery dust? Uh, it? no, it's not glitter. It seems to be like a like a darker brown green, um, oh. and it kind of clings to you. And then he mutters a couple of words, and the dust that's landing on you kind of like localizes in the areas of magical items that each of you have. Um, and he seems to be casting detect magic just using dust. Uh, to kind of identify where the ma uh, the magical 
pieces of uh, your uh, your equipment are. As soon as I see him doing that, I'm also going to cast Detect Magic. Okay. Detect all. Um, yeah. Yeah, so uh, as the magic, uh, as the Detect Magic spell <laughs> goes off, all of your items start to uh, ping the different types of, um, excuse me, the different schools of magic based on what they are. Uh, you in turn, Allura, kind of as he's focused on that, take your moment to try and cast it back on. Make a sleight of hand check for me. Try and do it without him seeing. Rolling like shit today. Leaves his boots glow like a ten-year-old. Yeah. Cool. Doc lights up like a rave. <laughs> yeah, your coat. Wait, no. Twelve. Twelve? All and right. he just kind of like looks at you a little bit and just kind of no. And he casts counter spell on your detect magic. Fuck you. Um Sorry. <laughs> but Whoa. uh but yeah, he, he does seem to have though. the presence of mind to be able to notice when somebody else is casting a spell. And just with a simple, no, he just cancels out your spell. Um, mm. And all right. the items that are pinging off on you right now, and he kind of like looks over you and just kind of... Eh. Eh. Like quite a little like collection. Not so paltry now. No. You're right. You're not. Uh. So, I send you to that dipshit. That's you right. You bring me my cat. We will try. So no, sorry. you will bring me my cat because that is why I'm sending you to the dipshit. We will look for your cat. Try I think to... that's very fair, Wilfred. Oh no, Amanda. Oh, I lost Amanda. Oh no. So it's okay. Oh. You're back, and you're back in the right place. We got you. Yeah. Oh, for you rascal. Um, sorry. Milford, no, sir, if you don't mind me asking, how do you know Amelia or Amanitas, the Mad Mage? Well, holy cow. Everything just went out. Wait, we're playing music. Oh, we're back right what now. the heck? <laughs> Hang on. Gotta fix this. God damn it, Kevin. Focusing. <laughs> yeah, Kevin's the one person when he drops it, like, screws the whole thing up. <laughs> The it's okay. It's it's your guys' internet. It's fine. All right, and we're back. Good. And he, um, so, how do you know Amelior? Yes. And you just kind of. Eh. Well, I uh, used to spend a bit of time in that uh, big forest near him. He used to come into the city every once in a while. Eh. And you then, spent uh, time in the high forest, Wilfred. Yes, it's a bit of a. An odd place. Don't like it very much anymore. I don't go there anymore. It's just weird. Um, but, uh... How long ago were you there, if you don't mind my asking? <sighs> what year is it? Uh, it's like 1464 or something, DR? Uh, it's 14... 1495, right? Five. 95, all right. Yeah. I knew it was 14. Yeah. And he's just kind of... Yeah, it's a 9 now. Let's go. Yeah. 1495, last I was there was 1472. 22 years ago? Quite a, a time for all of you, I imagine. Just a, a blink of an eye for me. Some of us, perhaps. Do you keep records of your travels? Uh, records of my travels. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever happen to take any trips with Amelior in your acquaintanceship? into the high forest. Uh, when he was younger, yes, he was very interested in uh, the, the forest and the, the grandfather tree and me being an elf of some repute. I was able to uh, provide him access to the, the forest and some things that people wouldn't naturally know. But um, once he stole lavender from me, well, I tried to kill him, I failed, and gave me a nice little bit of a scar here, so I just decided to say, fuck it, and I came to Wonder Mountain. It's understandable when someone takes your cat. My goodness. Ugh, what a monster. He's been a monster. Did you spend much time, did you have any encounters with Furbolg in the High Forest at all? Furbolgs? Um, you have your kind, it's a giant kin. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Nothing of any real note. Obviously, 
Some of them do live, well, did live there. I don't, I don't know if they still do. Um, yeah. There was one kind of interesting one. Uh, 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 mother and father coming through, seeming uh, part of a clan with a, uh, a bit of a, uh, I don't know, a, a child of some kind. Yeah, a couple of mothers and fathers as part of the clan, but uh, some strange things happened with those ones. The, the man kind of went a little crazy, I think, and then he just kind of... Well, he, he broke some kind of... Uh, Oh, what did they call it? Uh, a, a code. A code, a code, yes. He seemed to break some kind of a, a code and was um, cast out from the the rest of the uh, clan. Um, is there any chance that was around the last time you were in the High Forest? Uh, yes, it was one of the, the, the things that I last remember of being there, probably 20, 20 something years ago. Um, if you can, if you by any chance know anything about where that happened, do you, do you by any chance know this uh, guy's name? Um, anything will help me. I will, um, I mean, I'll start taking off my shoes. Like, if you, uh, I'll, tr I'll trade anything for this. Well, uh, the Farrogs didn't really uh, mix well with anyone outside of their own. It's one of the, uh, the strange things about them is why it's so hard to see you in a, a, a group such as this. Um, but, um, uh, no names, just big blue, a uh, bit of a, a purpley pink tinge to one of them. That's about it. Wasn't one okay. of the, wasn't the one who got cast out or, or the, uh, the one who was very um, sad to see him leave. Just another one of the, the, the group that was there. Okay. Um, do you by any chance know where this, where you were when in the high forest when this happened? <laughs> where this were you when the Furbolgs exiled memory? their own? Yeah. Uh, uh, Sorry, we're coming here asking so many questions. This has been uh, very helpful. Thank you so much, Wilfred. What? Oh uh, well, uh, yeah, I mean, he paid me to come in and settle our debt. Is uh, the least I can do. You seem to be having some. Um, ways of getting back at a uh, dipshit, so I figure it's okay. probably worth entertaining the, the, the basic things that you might be interested in knowing. Um, I don't remember. I'll, uh, have to be honest about that one. It was a bit of a a green place. No mountains, so it wasn't in the, the star mounts. Like a forest, you might say. Yes, a uh, forest. A very tall, uh, high forest. Like a high forest. Yes, yes, yes. Hmm. And he's at this point, he's just kind of playing with his one really long eyebrow and just like playing um, with the hairs that are on the side of it. Okay. Um, that's fair. Uh, Leaf, do you, do you have any other... Did you guys learn anything at the library that might be, uh, might be helpful here at all? Um, kind of turn to Allure and say, uh, I don't know, we kind of... Seems to be pretty, uh, pretty on for what we were looking for. This has been a lot more, um, yeah, I don't really know. I think, uh, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm a little, uh, <laughs> a little surprised. Yeah. I think, I think this, this, uh, connects pretty significantly well to what we, um, what we found at the library, um, a lot of this is stuff that Leaf kind of has to unpack. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a bit of thinking, but um... Leaf, maybe if we find Amelie or if he was around the, the High Forest the same time as Wilfred here, he might also have encountered this this group, this couple. It's definitely, yeah, we asked I know. About this already, did we not? Amelia? Um, no. Yeah. We talked to him a bit, but uh, he might have, you know, there's a chance he might have saved that. He did seem to like yeah. stories. Yeah, I don't think we asked him specifically about furbolgs. We've asked him kind of general questions, but. Yeah, actually, that's been a bit of a new route we've been hitting, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, um, Wilfred, uh, in your times exploring the Harry Forest, did you ever come across a group led by the Lady of the Woods, Lady Morgwise? 
Lady Moore was him, yes. And, uh, um, well, uh, it was some time before I encountered a uh, dipshit, but um, <laughs> uh, yes, when uh, they uh, they entered into the forest and and uh, tried to reclaim their homelands, uh, I was a bit old to be able to keep up with the the young stock, but I uh, uh, I I knew of her, she being. Oh, just a, a spry 270 herself. Hmm. Did, were they successful? Like, what happened to their party? Their group? Well, they went into the forest and, uh... You know, I don't actually know. All right, that's why I'm just I wondering. never saw them again. That's a very interesting thing for you to know. Where did you find that out? Uh, we've been doing some research on the High Forest, and I read her name in a book. Do you have the ability to reach out um, um, to people's minds? Uh, that was not something I ever particularly had any real interest in. I, I more, more prefer to uh, uh, observe at a distance, or just simply uh, uh, send myself somewhere if I ever need to do so. Um, have you ever observed, um, what was her name? Morgway. Morgway, since their attempt to reclaim their city? I had no reason to. I, I didn't, uh, I didn't particularly care. I mean, they are wood elves. They live in woods. I am uh, a high elf. I, I do, do not. I don't care what they found or what they did. It's, interesting to them, but not to me. Do you ever perform uh, magic for payment? It would depend on the payment. For coin, no. Coin has limited use down in the under mountain. But favors, favors have great value. Uh, would you mind giving our group a moment to discuss a few things? Uh, please, please. Of course, I will have a conversation with uh, Jared here. And you see him kind of look over at Jared, and Jared looks a little skittish. <laughs> okay, Jared. And he just kind of like gestures, and Jared leans in, so you've got a conversation. Um, um. Do we think that it's valuable to see if he can scry on what I assume are Leaf's parents? Yeah, that might, or at least if he's met them, that might he be. Said he had met them. Yeah. The more, essentially, the pink for bulk that he remembered. Yeah, that's fair. Or, I mean, if we uh, if we bring his cat back to him, I'm sure he'd be very happy to do it for us. But no, the the bringing the cat back is is payment for him sending us to Sacomber. I think he's angling for something magical. He sounds like he's interested in things. Well, he's interested in favors. That too, yeah. yes. Yeah, I think that he likes to, it sounds like he might like to, to have people in his debt. He could be very useful for us too, though. That He has a range of abilities that we are missing and information about, well, you know, some, some of it's a little dotty, but he might have informa more information about the Hoi Woods as we start, or the High Forest as we start to untangle everything. He sounds like he's been around the block. Uh, my question, are we thinking of heading out today? Should I get Hope down here? Yeah, probably, huh? Okay. Well, I, can, I can send to them with the stone. Oh, that's fair. Should we maybe do that? Yeah, we'll get them Get them and Cinnamon. I'm moving or just bring them down here, I guess. Well, I don't think they can take Cinnamon down here, but... They can, yeah, <laughs> they, they can recast and I think get Cinnamon. Mm -hmm. They can also just send cinnamon to, to like run, Dip. like to make the journey. It right. would take a while. Cinnamon's a spell, though. It's not a physical thing. They can just snap the fingers and it appears anywhere they are. Um, so, uh, I mean, fellas, one anyway. one thing that occurs to me: uh, should we choose to teleport ourselves to the Comber now? Uh, how are we getting back? I was just thinking the same thing because we wouldn't have the wagon. I mean, only... I assume there are some horses floating around the, the town that we could commandeer. I mean, Maybe, but we don't really know what kind of shape the town's even in. That's fair, but it doesn't sound like we're going to be spending much time, too much time into the town, and 
we might need to ask that this is a return trip then in, in our bargain. Mm, that we yes. can send to him when we're ready to come back. My thought, mainly if my understanding of teleportation is correct, which it might not be that, I think we might need to be physically present for him to bring us gotcha. back. But we have that spell book. Maybe with Amelior could help us get back. That's fair. Can, I don't know enough about the schools of magic. Can mages use the same spells that wizards can? So he's, I think he's just sort of branded himself differently. I think he might be a wizard. Okay. Um, the thing that might be tricky with that is if we're getting his, if we're getting Lavender back, that might be a little trick. I think if we save Melior from whatever is imperiling him or and help him and, you know, heal him. I really don't think he's a leg to stand on from stopping us to take back a stolen fucking cat. That's fair. That might be our, uh, or I might have I might have an idea to try to sweeten the deal for him. You're not Here's my thinking. Him as a cat, Les. We turn Les into a cat. <laughs> we just leave Les. <laughs> and that was cat. Goddamn cat joke. Um, no, it's your favorite. Remember, you liked it so much. Like an all cat themed RPG. There we go. I um, would play that 100. percent It's called Battle Cats. <laughs> Should we, um, okay, should we cast Get in Touch with oh, Hope and ask class. them to kind of meet us down yeah, here? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and break? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so you're using the Sending Stone to contact Hope? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so how do, uh, what do you want to say? Um, <clears throat> uh, Doctor, did you catch the name of anyone else in that tavern that Hope could ask to guide them down here so they know how to get past that door? Bubba. <laughs> Yo, Bubba. Okay. Um, Could we just send Jared to meet them? I guess I probably, huh? Yeah. I'm just gonna be sitting here. I'll, I'll happy I'm happy to. I'm happy to pay him more if we want, but. I'm happy to go. Yeah. I'm happy to go now, but I'm also like at some point when we come back, I'm with you, Doctor. I kind of want to see what else is down in the levels below. Mm-hmm. What? That's a tale for another day. Yeah, let's uh, let's tend to uh-huh. tend to the cat napper first. Okay. Um, join us in the under mountain. Um, sorry, Doctor. What was the name of the bar that we were able to get through at? Uh, yawning, yawning portal, right? Yawning portal. Yeah, yawning okay. portal. Perfect. Uh. Talk to Bubba at the Yawning Portal. Um, We're sending a half-elf named Jared to guide you down. To us. To us. Okay, 25. I'm sad there's there's no, like, room for me to be like, kisses, but it's okay. (laughs) All right. So the message is delivered, uh, and Hope just kind of uh, responds and, okay. And kind of gets it because I can't, I can't do Ember's accent at all. Uh, oh, <laughs> man. Um, got to have a lozenge on the way over. I can do <laughs> less leaf, a leaf and leaf, uh, and the doctor pretty well, but Allura and Emma are, or Allura and Hope are my, my cl- crutches. Um, but you do get the response of the affirmative understanding to find somewhere called the Yawning Portal to talk to Bubba and to make your way down, and that uh, they will meet somebody named Jared. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, good to know. So message delivered. Should we uh, send Jared back to uh, collect our friend? Yeah, and I can pay him whatever the difference on this is. Mm-hmm. So it would be payment for... Uh, guiding another person? Guiding another person would be an extra five gold. Okay, cool, yeah, I can do that. Well, uh, uh, Jared, thank you so much for doing this. Um, are you There's, paying me? It's the least I can do. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I like right, this guy. Uh, so, the person's name I mean is Hope. Uh, yeah, Hope. They're uh, tiefling. Uh, tiefling. Yeah, they'll, they'll probably be able to recognize them. Pretty cool. All right, I'll uh, keep that in mind. Um, uh, they stand out about as much as these two do, and I just sort of point to Leap and Les. Uh, so, um, right, all better then. 
Um, good to know. All right. Uh, yeah, it's fine. Uh, Tiefling coming down named Hope. I'll uh, make sure I meet him at the uh, the bottom of the chute. Cool. Appreciate Thanks. it. Happy to help. Uh, so where y'all going to be staying while you're down here? Probably here. Hey. <laughs> no, no you, you don't stay here. Well, I where, mean, where should not... we stay? We'll, we'll be see. waiting here. Guide. Right, well, uh, that's what I mean. Do you, do you want to be staying in an inn? Do you want to be staying in a tavern? Uh, where, where is it exactly you want to be? Like, are you planning uh, to spend it well, night? Uh, hold on one second. Are we, are, have we left Wilford now, or are we still... You're still in there. You're just chatting with Jared about what the okay. situation is. Yeah, yeah my understanding is... Planning on- um, well, I think we have to discuss our plans with Wilfred, but I don't think we're planning on staying the night down here. Not staying the night. So, so you just... Oh, so you're just going to stay here. Okay, well... We just need Hope to come meet us here. Um, they should be able to get here fairly quickly. Right, but and for, for me to go get them, that's the thing. It's, uh, it's going to take, you know, about an hour or so for me to get there and bring them back. Is Wilfred not cool with us just being in here? He's not even cool with me being in here, except for the fact I'm settling a fucking debt. That's okay. fair. Let's arrange this with... We haven't talked to Wilfred yet, actually, guys, so yeah. let's wrap up. That's fair, our- yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wilfred's like, fuck no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we can always just return back. If you take us, uh, Jared, to like a, a bar or something like that, in the meantime, we could meet up. We could here. also just walk back with you to the door, check out some shops along the way. This is getting too complicated, maybe. <laughs> um... <laughs> I mean, if all you're doing is getting me to go there and meet a friend, I can drop you off at a, a tavern and be able to get you a chance to have a bit of me down here if you want. Sure. I, um, yeah. Sounds kind of fun. Wouldn't mind people watching a little bit. Let's just iron out what deal we're making with Will. Yes. Yeah. Hey, hey, uh, uh, Wilfred. Ah. Wilfred, we would love to find justice for you and get your cat back, but we'd need a trip to Sacomber. Uh, collateral! You don't get you, me my cat, I keep some collateral. What would you like? We are, we are going out of our way to try to get Lavender back. No collateral. Hey, uh, I'm sending you... Sir. To Sakamura to okay. get the cat. To attempt, to attempt to get your cat. Yes. We're doing. We are doing you a favor. I want to turn to. He's little, doing us, he's doing a, us a pretty big favor, I think. Um, Do you want Lavender back? Well, of course, I want my cat back. But no. what sort you of came here would you be looking not at? to just tell me that you know where my cat was. You came here looking to go to the city. This is simply the payment for me sending you to the city as you bring my cat back. We'll try to bring your cat back. But if we you don't, don't even... then I keep some collateral. There's, there's been an attack on that city. I don't care. <laughs> do, do I live in that city? I, I don't give a shit. What sort of collateral are you looking for, Wilfred? Uh, uh, how about this? You bring me my cat back, we are square. If not, you owe me a favor. That there seems is a fair? particular item of interest to me that uh, has been found on the, the second floor of the Under Mountain. You don't bring okay. me my cat? You fetch me that item. That sounds fair. That sounds very fair. Good. What kind of item is it? It's a large, smooth stone with red lettering. And it belongs to someone else, I'm guessing? It belongs to the mountain. <laughs> Ah, one of those. All right. I can accept that deal. Then we have an accord. Let me drop a contract. Then he makes his way over to the bookshelf again and pulls out a couple of scraps of parchment. 
one eventually that's large enough to actually <laughs> write a proper contract out on uh, and takes a quill from uh, a nearby table and starts writing and the ink itself is black but as he's writing it flows out this golden shimmering color uh, as he Ooh. draws up a contract uh, with the uh, services being rendered that he is sending you to the city of Sacomber for whatever task you should want to complete uh, with the payment in kind being the return of his cat, Lavender or the um, uh, the favor of retrieving this item, a large, smooth, flat stone with red lettering uh, on the second floor of the Undermountain that is currently in, quote-unquote, the possession of the mountain. Hmm. Can you tell us anything more about this item you're hunting? Uh, I would recommend not touching it with your hands. Aha. Uh-huh. It's not exactly heavy. It's de- deceptively light, as a matter of fact. But uh, it's been said that uh, people who touch it don't exactly do so for long. We'll put it that way. <laughs> as in they die. Or as in they... They don't touch it for long. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course. Um, a second level... Wilfred, we've heard, is that an area where interested collectors might find interesting items such as this? The second level is uh, fairly well picked over, save for a couple of very specific places that um, the mountain protects. <laughs> but uh, eh, there may be some items of interest that you might find for yourself. You, anything else you find on your, your journey down there, you're welcome to keep. This specific stone is all that I particularly care about. Or we'd be able to keep everything else we found. The contract states that all you need is that stone. Exactly. That's what I'm telling you. Sounds great, Wilfred. We'll sign. And can I... Uh, yeah, go ahead. Can I do a quick read over the contract and just make sure that everything's in order? Sure. Uh, make just a quick intelligence check for me. Yeah. Uh-huh. I was oh, about to say I want to make an insight check on Wilfred, but then I was like, "There's no point. I know he's being shady as fuck. I don't even need to." <laughs> uh, intelligence, yeah, Jordy. Yeah, intelligence. Dirty twenty. Dirty twenty. Um, it looks pretty up and up. It's very clear cut. The language is not flowery or flowy. He seems to be a very straight to the point kind of person, uh, at least in this uh, kind of a contract. Um, you agree that he's going to send you to Sacomber for whatever reason you need to go there for your own personal gains or personal reasons. Um, you would, will attempt to bring back his cat, Lavender, which is currently in the possession of Amelior. Uh, if you fail to do so, then you are uh, owing him a favor, which is to retrieve this specific rock from the second floor of uh, the Undermountain. Um, and the terms of breaking the, uh, the claws is uh, the interesting part because you do go through the fine print and breaking the clause you uh, agree to a year of servitude per party member uh, to him um, is there a time constraint on this uh, the time it, constraint it, is within uh, is for either task to be completed within one month that's uh, fair I'd like okay. to amend uh, part of this contract to be six months six months is too long three at most 90 days We'll take three. Three. And he just quickly goes back over. And you can see he kind of like waves the, the back side of the quill. And it erases the 30-day mark. And he writes in 90 days again. All right. So it's a 90-day contract to uh, complete either one of those two tasks. He will agree to send you to Sacomber as his end of the payment up front. <laughs> um, and then it's up to you guys to decide, obviously, when you take this, if you want to do it immediately or if you want to wait and do it uh, later on. Um, and then once you sign, uh, once he sends you, the 90 days starts. Ooh. All right. Um, should we grab a drink and uh, wait for hope? Sounds good to me. All right. Um, so, uh, I, so uh, sorry, <laughs> just lost my train of thought completely. Um, so Wilfred ends up leading you to the door. Uh, all the trays of meat and food are cleaned up by the couple of servants that end up coming out uh, in the back. And you all notice that they're kind of spectral in some way. And as he reaches out for the door and he grabs the handle, that familiar shimmering pink and blue, uh, pink and purple light forms around the edge of the door as he opens it. Uh, Less, yeah. <laughs> As everyone's leaving this place, I want to trail behind and let them all leave ahead of me first. Okay. 
So you, uh, you're able to do that. The door is open and Wilfred is ushering you out, Jared leading the way and one after another until eventually you're the last one. And then after everyone's out of the hut, I close it with me still inside with Wilfred. Okay. Oh boy. Uh, go ahead and make a strength check to try and close the door on him. <laughs> it's just good. On Jared? Uh, no, on Wilfred. Wilfred's just Because he, he's holding the door open for you right now. So you're trying to close the door that he's holding. So I rolled a 19. Uh, plus... Strength. Yeah. Uh, that's a 23. 23, okay. So you kind of, like, grab the edge of the door and, like, start to make your way out. And you see, you catch the exact moment where he just loosens his grip on the on the handle ready to close the door. And you just slam the door and all of you just kind of turn around and the door is now closed. Uh, and oh. you see Jared just kind of looking and his eyes go bulbous. And he's just like... That's not good. So, Les, you're inside with Wilfred, and he's just kind of looking at you. What are you doing? I have a quick question for you, and I don't have much time, obviously. Portals to the Plane of Water. Can you do this? Portals to the Plane of Water? Are you yes. insane? Not insane. Can you do it? Uh, right now? No. Theoretically, yes. I would need a scroll. Not right now. It can be of any time you choose. I just need to know, can you do this? I, I would need a, a spell. You would have to bring me the spell, but there is a, the ability to do so. It's a very powerful, rare spell. But theoretically, you bring it with enough payment, and sure, I'll send you anywhere you want to go. You need a scroll, specifically. Not and you can't do this on your own, Pat. I cannot do it on my own power. I do not know the spell. You bring me a book that has the spell in it, or you bring me a, a scroll of some kind that I can use to cast the spell. I will send you there for payment in kind. Would you know if Emilio has such a book? <laughs> no. No. Do you know of anyone who would? No. That is incredibly high-level, difficult magics. Not anything any poultry magician would have on hand. You would be looking at traversing uh, ancient catacombs and and uh, and deepest parts of uh, of, of mountains and and uh, dragon's lairs, trying to find a, a book that had any kind of a spell with that. And you know nobody who has such materials. Uh, no. Why? Why? Why would I know anybody who did? If I did, I would find them. I would kill them, and I would take it. Fair enough. Well, I will find a spell for you to perform. I will do whatever you ask, give you whatever favor you want, or whatever magical item you see to complete Damn, this. Damn, son. Huh. That is an interesting proposition. You ever heard of the Triton Kingdom? I have heard of Tritons. I do not know of the kingdom itself. <laughs> That is what I am. I am a Triton of the Plane of Water. Yeah. If you so choose to perform this task for me, I will return any magical item that you are seeking from the Triton Kingdom. <laughs> that is an interesting proposition. And you see his mind really start to work, like trying to imagine all the different possible avenues that he could go. And he just kind of bring me a book with a spell inside. I will send you there, and I will keep the book, and a minor payment will be due. Bring me a spell I use one time, something more valuable will be required. Done and done. Go join your friends. Triton. <laughs> and he reaches for the door handle again. Okay, open it up. Join the rest of them. Um, so what's interesting is he reaches for the door handle and kind of pulls it open inside. And you can see on the other side, all of you have been seeing Jared, like, grasping at the handle, trying to force the door open, and nothing is happening. He's just, like, spinning. A, a, it's essentially the handle is a flywheel. It doesn't actually catch on anything. Um, and when uh, Wilfred opens it from the inside, that... Uh, pink and purple light forms around the edge of the door and it opens up to the interior again and Les is just standing there looking perfectly normal nothing out of the ordinary um, but Wilfred just kind of steps out and 
Good to speak to you, Triton. I look forward to next time. And he kind of anytime, my friend. Anytime. And he shuts the door behind you, uh, and the edges of the door vanish, and the house just kind of stands and kind of seems to not shrink, but like seems to just be the smaller version of what it uh, of what the interior led you to believe it was. And uh, and Jared there just kind of, uh, well, that was a little unexpected, right? Um, shall Doc we? sighs audibly. I'm going to turn to the dark side. Hey, man, you're the only one that hasn't dipped off for me this trip. If you got to see anything, feel free. <laughs> Out of curiosity, Jordy, what uh, what spell is that? Uh, you guys don't know? Uh, oh, uh, no, I know, but like... As as people, not as uh, your PCs, it's, yeah, the, ga- like it's the, the gate spell. The gate spell. Yeah. So okay. it's a ninth level uh, wizard and bard spell, I believe. Um... And uh, yeah, and it's something that is a an unbelievably and powerful spell. Uh, allows you to open a gate uh, to another dimension, uh, another plane of existence that allows you to pass through uh, over a certain period of time. Usually, it's done to draw something f- from the other plane, but sometimes it can also be used to just create a temporary portal. Mm. Okay. Cool. All right. So Jared just kind of All right uh, back as a group then. So, uh, Ba, yeah? Sounds good to me. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, follow me. Are you looking for cheap or good? Good. Good. Good? Good. Mm-hmm. Cheap, no. Cheap, no. Good. Okay, right. Last um, will probably challenge someone to a drinking. Oh. Competition? So if that exists somewhere? <laughs> oh my god, is there a drinking championship? Uh, yeah, there's quite a few of them. Uh, do, you, do you want me to bring you somewhere with a drinking championship, or do you want to just chill for Preferably for me, but that's just me. Somewhere with gambling would be nice. Somewhere with gambling and drinking, right? I can do that. Okay, uh, follow me. And he ends up leading you back. Kind of a familiar path to where you guys ended up coming from originally, uh, but rather than coming uh, to the convergence of the tri-fork and then continuing further on he actually leads you down the left-hand fork and then eventually leads you just to a, a fairly small uh but three-story like kind of low uh place where you all kind of duck underneath uh with the exception of i believe the doctor because you're you're fairly short right doc i'm little yeah so yeah with, with the exception Shake of you hell. everybody else is kind of stooping to get inside and it does appear to be something that's kind of made for dwarves and a couple of uh, halflings definitely the shorter races um but it's a three-story place that's got multiple uh, tables full of all different kinds of uh drinks that are being handed out multiple bartenders running around grabbing a few different places uh or a few different uh, locations and you're able to order up drinks and jared grabs you guys a big uh table on the far side you know drawing a little bit of uh interest from a couple of people around but overall nothing really over the top um and so with the message sent out to Hope, Jared uh, heading off to go fetch them while you guys have your drinks in the bar, I think that'll be where we end up tonight's session. Cheers! Yeah. Yeah. A solid one. Some good stuff found yeah, out yeah. inside the uh, the library and then an awesome oh, yeah. first half day in the Underground. Big underground. Yeah. Yoo-hoo. All right, well, Wilfred's cool, but Bubba's the real MVP. Yeah. <laughs> Bubba's Art the work for MVP. Bubba. Yeah. Hey, uh, Wilfred, I want to see those long eyebrows. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, you get some little one-on-one with them. Yeah, everybody got a nice little chance to interact with him there. Some really cool stuff. Elith and Allura doing their own little snap investigation on something that might match what they were looking for. Um, sadly, didn't manifest in anything, but you at least yeah. have a, a direction. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah, a lot of cool yeah, avenues. Yeah, done really badly if we had not gone back. Sorry? I said, I feel like that could have gotten re- gone really badly if we had not headed back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nope, no shadow of a doubt. <laughs> not, and the, oh, the, no. the oh, really funny part is... Was bad. Yeah, well, the really funny part is is that it wouldn't have been bad for you two. It would have been bad for the rest of them. Because <laughs> you two are unassuming. You you fit in. You match what everybody else is down here. Leaf, Les, the Doctor, and Jared really don't. <laughs> so wait Kieran doesn't I thought he was supposed to be like our guide well so, sorry like sorry I meant the four of them as a unit don't okay yeah, yeah he's fair a enough. bad guide we know that he's only been to the first level 
<laughs> Allura is throwing so journey. much shade. He's a very safe, <laughs> shady character. Yeah, Definitely. It's like, oh, I've only been to the first level. Oh, such a good guide for all of the Undermountain. Yeah, I've only been yeah. down here like two or three dozen times. Oh my god. You know what? He got he, he got us to a guy that apparently met me when I was like one, so that's pretty <laughs> So okay, so Great. one thing just to clarify here, because like he did describe that and roughly describe that, but he described that there was a clan. It's just that that was what he remembered yeah. uh, as one of the standout things is that there was a man or a, a verbal uh, father that was exiled yeah. from the clan. Now that may be you, it may not be you, but like it was one of those things okay. where like but the immediate logical did. jump is it's me. So yeah. 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 Maybe I'm Leaf's the spy. Gonna, Leaf's okay, got a bad a, daddy. Like a pink, pinkish furball too in the group. Was that? Yeah, that was a separate one. Okay. Uh, so a pinkish, like a, a pinkish blue uh, furball. Okay. Um, and he just didn't really go into much more detail because, again, he doesn't really know what the the clan structure is like or anything. It's just that he remembered one clan and that one specific family with the father being exiled. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right, awesome. Well, we'll go ahead and wrap everything up tonight. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, appreciate you guys sticking with us for the whole session. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and big congratulations again to the winner of our giveaway tonight, which was... Do, 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 do. Uh, who's the winner? Taco. Clockwork underscore Taco. Congratulations for winning that. So we'll go ahead and get your dice tray package up. Uh, we'll get that shipped out to you, like I said, probably a week, week and a half, depending on how long it takes for a post. Uh, and we'll <laughs> hopefully see you using it. Make sure you send us a picture when you get it. <sighs> Awesome. Have a great night, everybody. We'll see you here next week. Bye. 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 Goodbye. Bye.